is Diablo Immortal going to be probably the biggest game we've seen come out since what? Maybe New World? Okay, so yeah. <clears throat> let me characterize this for you. So going into Diablo Immortal Tech Alpha, December 2020, I was thinking, you know, played Diablo 3 for almost a decade, played Diablo 2 for almost two Same. decades. Uh, let's let's give this a shot. Let's see, let's see what they built. Um, I, I've met uh, Papa Wyatt in person a few times. Like, uh, I they, they've got to build. They, they've they've they got to had something interesting here, right? Uh, gave it a shot, and at first it was skeptical. You know, like how are you going to put a Diablo game on mobile? How is this going to work? And what I very quickly realized within about two hours is that this is a console level game or a PC level game that just so happens to be on a mobile device it was kind of my very first impression. Like that okay. this is a very d deep game with a million different systems that has all the same features as a Diablo two or a Diablo three, but actually it's better than that. It's just better than Diablo three, right? It's just straight up better. So, uh, I grinded the tech alpha like 250 hours. It was, it was very surprising. I was not expecting to walk into the tech alpha and, be, and grind it out, right? I was just going to give it a shot. Uh, and I think a lot of people had that same impression. They walked in the tech alpha like, oh, we'll give this a shot. We'll see how it is. So um, at that time, there was, a, there was a little bump in sort of community sentiment. Well, people... people People who were paying really close attention to the community went, this game is going to be good. But not a lot of people noticed. Like, pe only people who were really paying close attention to the community. In other words, people who are, like, in the live streams every day, people who are other content creators, other things like that, kind of picked it up at that point. So then Closed, closed Alpha comes around, and then we get to see some of the end game. We get to see the cycle strife. We get to talk about the immortals and the shadows. And people are starting to, 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 to really, it gets another little bump. Closed beta comes around. Uh, we're a lot of people are live streaming the game now. Um, I live streamed Becoming the Immortal. They added basically a whole nother expansion to the game just in a few months. Uh, and that got a whole lot of traction as well. And then uh, more and more and more and more traction is happening. And then uh, they announced that there's going to be a PC client. And things are uh, absolutely bananas now. Absolutely nuts to the point that to the point that I think this will probably be the biggest ARPG game ever made bigger than Diablo three, bigger than Diablo two, bigger than any other previous ARPG game. Um, and a lot of people might be surprised to hear me say that, but I, I think um, I think this is probably going to be the biggest ARPG ever made. Yeah, I, I, I would actually agree with that. And I do think that's a big statement because I think Diablo three is like top three all time. It, it, it's like it's like Minecraft, Diablo three, like those kind of games are up there. But I actually do agree um, because well, okay, of, if we're yeah. if, if we're including Minecraft as an ARPG, yeah, Diablo Immortal's not going to. No, be I just meant like PC. No, I just meant like PC games. Like like if I pull it up, okay. Diablo three is up there. <laughs> Forza three Horizons is honestly the best ARPG I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> right next to Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I got it right here. I got it right here. Uh, it's PUBG, Minecraft, and then Diablo three. Yeah, Diablo three is literally third. Like if you Wikipedia, really? Yeah, yeah. Top selling okay. PC games of all time. Yep. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, I pulled up here. I'll put. I'll I'm put not, it on I mean, screen. I believe you. I'm gonna pull it up here. Top selling. I'm gonna dox myself with my search results here. Top selling PC. I get, I get the impression that there's probably a big gap between Minecraft and anything else. Yeah, well, well, yeah, well PUBG is actually bigger in terms of copies sold. Uh, oh, PUBG right. is 42 million, Minecraft's 33. Diablo 3 is 20 million. I want to say it was like 5 million in the first 24 hours. It was something ridiculous for Diablo I believe, 3. Or Diablo, yeah. I, yeah. Think, yeah. I believe they pre-sold 9 million copies or something like that. Yeah, it, it was something I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. And that was back, you know, 12 years ago or whatever. Dude, I think that's when I was working at nothing. Best Buy. And, like, the pre-orders so, for that was was insane. The line going out the door was, like, all day long for that stuff. I actually yeah. remember this. To yep. put this into perspective, um, 
Diablo Immortal has a pre-register campaign where if you click the pre-register button yep, yep. and you, you get notified for it on the App Store. Um, they had a campaign that if, if they hit 30 million um, by launch, that everybody would get a brand new cosmetic in the game. Uh, they hit that like two weeks ago. We still got a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's 30 million. So if 20 million is the number of Diablo 3 sold, 30 million is, is pre register yep. already for yep. a free to play game. It's going to be like you 100 know, million. It's going to be a 100 million pre register. And then however many people are going to pick yep. it up after launch. They are launch. They're playing it, whatever. But right. it is worth the context of Diablo 3 had the same thing, but it was a bad launch and it kind of crashed pretty quick. And then and then it actually became a good game. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen with, with Immortal. It's two completely separate things. Yeah. Um, I think I think Immortal is going to be a lot better on launch because it got delayed. Um, so I, I think a lot of that risk is mitigated. I think, you know, them adding the controller support and and for sure the PC client is going to mitigate some of that risk. But I think you think even back then, if it launched, it would have been fine. Let me characterize this for you. Um, you guys have have you played World of Warcraft? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I have not even, even a little bit. Yeah, I have. Right. since Burning Crusade. So, if Tech Alpha was vanilla WoW, then Closed Alpha is basically a whole expansion, right? It's it's Burning Crusade, and then the Closed Beta is basically Wrath of the Lich King, and the you know. However, you feel about Cataclysm, like content. I'm talking about content, right? <laughs> we don't uh, talk about Cataclysm. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, just imagine a fourth good expansion, and then uh, that that would be basically what we're gonna get for release. So basically, we're getting this game, and it's already got like four expansions on top of it, um, and uh, there's there's an ins insane amount of content for, uh, especially for a mobile game. Like, people are gonna play this game as a mobile game. They're going to approach it. There's going to be a lot of people coming from the mobile space, from the raids and the, you know, yeah, 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 yep. whatever. It'll, it'll be not, not a nice bridge. Game. Yep. They, they, they have no idea what they're coming into. It's this, it's a massive, massive world. Now, people who are like, um, wow, veterans and they've played every expansion, uh, you know, you're not going to walk into like a, a game that has like 20 expansions on it, right? It's a brand new game. But it does have a significant amount of content, uh, a surprising amount for a brand new game. Okay, cool. Uh, I had a, a viewer say Diablo Immortal will be for, mo for mobile, will be only for mobile, right? No, it, it will be uh, cross-platform. You'll be able to play it on PC as well, but it will also be featured on mobile. And then uh, Ford asked, what is one of the biggest pitfalls of character development when starting a new character? Mm, yeah, so, okay, yeah, I guess... To add some color to the first comment. Sure, yeah, there, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it is a mobile game, right? So it's targeted towards mobile. It's designed for mobile. The UI is for mobile. So there's a PC client that will be launched. The PC client will be in open beta when the game launches. And the PC client is just a tweaked version of the mobile client, right? So it's got these very big UIs and other things like that. So... To, to, to be clear, it's not like a PC designed game with like you know, yeah. floatable win windows all over yeah, the place yeah. And, yeah. and all this kind of thing, right? Uh, so if you can play it on PC, but it's still like this mobile designed kind of game. So that's the experience, right? I guess. Cool. It's yeah, thanks for clarifying that for sure. Yes. And then um, in terms of character development, uh, one thing that is is tough for this game is that at at launch uh you're basically locked into whatever character that you pick right now you can go back and start another character but the way all of the systems of this game work you're never going to want to have an alt and having an alt is a very challenging task um now they are introducing down the road a system called class change which will allow you to change your your character's class and sort of migrate all of your upgrades and stuff to a new class. Um, but they've indicated that's going to be sort of an infrequent thing. Like this isn't, this isn't final fantasy 14 where you can just like swap classes on the fly or, or something like that. Right. 
uh, this is going to be a thing where you're like, all right, I want to switch to this class. I'm going to, there's, there's a very long cooldown, and I'm going to be this class for a long time. Right. So I would say that's kind of the biggest drawback is that you kind of have to know what you want to play. And until that first big patch drops with the class change feature, you're kind of stuck if you're unhappy. Okay. Cool. Um, I've got I've got a bunch of questions, but I want to let you guys jump in if you would like to. I don't want to hog the the mic here. So I was going to say something, Brad. You know, I was going to say <laughs> we got we got Cobra over here. He hasn't said a word the whole time. You seem to be thinking, God damn it, Brad, again, again. I know. I'm I just know. I'm just I'm just listening. I'm just listening. <laughs> what I was saying. I'm well, an open book. I, I will tell you anything you want to know about this game. Literally anything. Like, <laughs> I even have, like, guesses about, like, how the code is written. Like, I haven't seen it, <laughs> but I, I, I can guess. I can, okay. I can, I can make a good I got a question. guess. Like, we can go uh -oh, as deep as uh -oh. you want. <laughs> right. Ready to go deep. Necromancer versus Wizard. Who am I playing? Because that's the hard one for me. I've been going back and forth on this. I watched your Wizard Guide video. I think, yep. Do you have the Necromancer one up yet? I didn't see that one, unless I missed uh, it. Yeah, I'm editing it right now, That's and it's going to be the best guide ever. It's going to be amazing. Okay. Um, Great. Uh, Link I'm, in the description below for all the people watching later. <laughs> Link yeah. in the description <laughs> below. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do uh, need to. Uh, we do need to put your links down below for sure. Let's let's throw a massive. Let's throw massive amounts of love to Echo Hack for taking the time. I'll, I'll find those links while you guys are talking. Yep. Go ahead. So okay. So two things. When you say wizard versus necromancer kind of like what are your priorities okay so i'm going to put it this way uh i want to look at it from well i was going to say two but really three perspectives first and foremost where does the fun come from each of them so when you're playing them where does your burst of enjoyment come from right you know how like yeah. if you're a sniper getting that headshot real quick when you're a first person shooter that's where you're gonna get your enjoyment from right so that's number one for me. Number two, how does the actual gameplay style in terms of what you're repetitively doing over and over again feel like between the two? Mm -hmm. And then three, is there actually a massive power difference balance between the two currently, or do they both feel different rows, et cetera? Got it. Okay, so let's talk about Wizard first. So Wizard is this ranged class. It's a primarily ranged class, right? So you're not really getting into melee range most of the time. There are some, uh, we call them battle mage style builds uh, that get into, into melee range, which are pretty interesting to play. Uh, but for the most part, all of your abilities are fairly ranged, right? Uh, so you're gonna be playing at range and that means you're a little squishier. That means you need to dodge and be aware of like where your opponents are and, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, like you would play any sort of range class in any sort of Diablo game. So that's sort of the first thing. It's like you have that 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 ranged vibe under uh, characterizes everything you do as a wizard. Second thing is uh, you have spell combos. And wizard has this more than any other class. There are there are combos for other classes, but I think wizard has the most of this than any other class in the game. So essentially, like let's say you drop a meteor on the ground, the ground will start burning and then you drop arcane wind. And because arcane wind is a wind spell on top of a fire thing, it will, uh, it will synergize and you'll do 50% more damage Ooh. when you're casting it on top Ooh. of it. So you, you set up these combos to like <laughs> increase your damage. And teacher follow up question. Did they copy uh, breath of the wild? Is there a lawsuit incoming? And put the elements all together. You don't get this reference. You, did you play Breath of the Wild? I I, I did. Uh, I don't think it copies Breath of the Wild. No, it's more of a meme. But 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 it's that it's that style, right? Like where it's, yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's got that. It's kind of. But that's not the only thing. So what's interesting? So that's sort of like the solo version of it. It's like I'm comboing my spells, right? But the group version of it is you're setting up your group members' combos, right? So you drop the meteor on the ground because you know your uh, crusader or whatever is going to drop their their ability which then combos with your thing Ooh. so uh it's it's all about kind of setting up these big combos these uh these big like wombo combo kind of things they have some they have a, an ability called black hole it's one of the best grouping abilities in the game as you might imagine ah from um, diablo 3 yeah yeah except oh, yeah. this time yeah. this time it's 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 a lot more useful in this game I would say than D three, 
uh, in the sense that when you group things together, uh, the AoEs just pop off because then you can just drop down all the combos on top of them. It's really great. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that, that's what you would do in a D3 too, though. I I think if I remember correctly, with well, yeah, Black Hole had different runes. There were some of them that like grouped them up better. There was that had a bigger radius. There was some that like made them do less damage. Some that made them take more damage. They all had kind of different roles. Mm-hmm. So in D3, right. essentially, the the that job is actually filled by the barbarian, and what the barbarian is doing is called pixeling um, enemies. And literally, what you're doing is you're taking every enemy and you're putting it on uh on on the next pixel next to each other so that you can optimally hit all of them. You're not going to be pixeling anything in this game. The hitboxes are designed a little bit better than Diablo 3. Uh so in a in a in an interesting way grouping abilities like black hole are actually more useful than just having a barbarian stomp in the middle of your group and pixel everything for you <laughs> like yeah, uh, are, is yeah. there area damage like like how there was in Diablo three with the splash damage, which is why it was so beneficial to group them up? Okay, yeah. So for those who don't know, area damage is a Diablo three specific mechanic that when you do damage to one target, it will make a very tiny invisible AOE that will do damage to other targets. And uh, probably the most important thing to know about it in D3 is that it causes a tremendous amount of server lag. So usually groups turn it off. <laughs> Like they usually optimize their gear. Yep, so I remember it's that. It's not even on your gear. Yep. Uh, so um, that's not in this game because I think that mechanic causes server lag in general. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sense. that's actually pretty good to hear for the for like the long term functionality and and keeping things smooth, especially for maybe for people that don't have the blaster to your phone or something for being yeah. able to still enjoy the game. So if you want to if you want to do an area of effect damage thing, you have to use an area of effect damage spell or ability um so uh so yeah a wizard is really all about sort of these kind of things they have uh teleport as their movement skill so they can have like this instantaneous uh burst of speed and i guess um they're they're just they're just really great for kind of uh grouping things up and blasting things down with uh with aoe at range uh so necromancer is kind of uh, it. It's a it's a similar genre as the wizard in in terms of it being ranged, but it kind of approaches everything from the exact opposite perspective, right? So instead of laying down these big combos, uh, having big ranged spells, blowing everything up, uh, as the necromancer, you're going to be doing a lot more kind of like standing back, managing your minions. Um, and then occasionally going in and doing these like short to mid range spells where you're, uh, debuffing or you're, you're trying to like get some extra DPS in on, uh, the opponent. Um, so it's, it's more of like a pet class, uh, style build. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting how they set it up. So like in Diablo two, everybody knows Diablo two Necromancer. It's very iconic. Uh, in Diablo 2, you have these active abilities where you go to a corpse and you summon the skeleton and you go and you summon these skeletons and then the skeletons just kind of AI and do their own thing. (laughs) And sometimes they're wonky and there's like 20 things on the screen and they're just like doing whatever they want and they all bump bump into each other and it's kind of a chaotic mess, but it's really fun. And this, it's a lot more strategic. So like if you have an ability on your bar, it will just automatically summon the skeletons when it can. You don't even have to do anything. Oh, the skeletons nice. will just that's really nice. pop yeah, up. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's a lot more. Yeah, so what you're actually doing is you're like focusing the skeleton's attacks. So you're saying, hey, go DPS this thing instead of just like whatever you want, right? Um, or you're grouping them up, right? So like <clears throat> you can get a you can get like a fire golem and you can say, hey, I want to drop this fire golem on this uh, group of enemies. And it'll just do this gigantic AOE kind of meteor style thing, right? Uh, And and leave like a burning ground, which, by the way, you could also combo, right? Um, Okay. The other thing you can do is there's certain uh, there's certain abilities. There's one called Dark Curse. Um, You could use Dark Curse with a certain legendary, and you can buff all of your pets together as well, 
right? So you can group all of your pets, right, strategically. You can be like, hey, you go here, you go here, you go here. Then you drop Dark Curse, and then now they are like 80% faster for six seconds or something like that, and they're they're just mowing everything down. Um, now, the drawback to that is um, to sort of the pet-centric builds of Necromancer is that at the very, very, very top levels of play, uh, when you're doing challenge rifts and that sort of, uh, or, or like PvP, the pets kind of fall off in usefulness at the very, very top levels of play. Uh, but definitely for somebody who's just approaching the game from like a casual to semi, se se even semi-hardcore perspective, um, you can steamroll the game with pets. It's it's crazy. In fact, I my opinion is that Necromancer starting out like that, for someone who wants to really start out a character, Necromancer probably has a better power scaling curve because of pets and because of the way pets work and tank damage and that sort of thing. Um, but that's, you know, that's, I would say maybe like 10, 20% better than any other class in terms of like that kind of power scaling, at least what we saw in the beta, I'd say. They might have nerfed a few things, tweaked a few things. And do we know about um, that? Have they balanced? Have they done any balance? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but do we yeah. know? Have they changed anything since the beta? We we do. That's 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 a subject we can get into, but that's pretty <laughs> technical. So yeah, I know there's a lot to get into, but I'll yeah. I'll let you kind of wrap up your thoughts. Sorry. So the other style of necromancer that you can play um, relies a, a lot more on sort of their spells and uh, corpses, right? So. When you kill enemies or when your pets die, they will leave corpses on the ground. And those are a special resource that only the necromancer can use. In fact, only the necromancer can even see them on the on the floor, right? So you see them and then you can consume them. Uh, so like there's corpse lance, for example, which will take a corpse and like turn it into a lance and fire <laughs> at an enemy. Or there's corpse explosion, which you might be familiar with. But there's also legendaries that modify all of those things, right? So there's a legendary, for example, that will like the corpses instead of exploding will like ooze poisonous gas and uh, like just poison everything and do this big AOE uh, like damage over time kind of thing. Right. Cobra looks uh, like he hates that. He's up there just angry. Just Yeah. Yeah. He can smell the corpses from here with his new nose after the surgery. Cobra's a <laughs> Cobra's a monk kind of player. No, I, I I played monk, but I was mostly witch doctor and crusader in D3. Mm. We can yeah. talk about crusader. Uh, uh last thing I'll mention is that <clears throat> in PVP, uh necros are kind of a stun machine or a CC machine, right? No. Uh, they have these gigantic towers of bone that they can just drop on the battlefield. And if they drop it on top of you, you'll get knocked up into the air like two, three times and then stunned and then knocked back and then damaged. And then anybody who's not in the immediate area when that happens, it just does damage over time to like an area. So you can like zone out entire parts of the battlefield uh, with the, the bone towers. You can stun people with uh, bone spikes. And m more than anything, you're really like a support PvP class. Um, you're not really focusing too much on doing like a lot of damage. You're more you're more just trying to CC things so that your team, uh, the people who do the damage can get in there and like just wreck. Do you feel like he's very, because of that, do you think he's very ping based? So my question being between wizard and necromancer, since the reason I'm, I'm asking so selfishly this question so much, cause like these are the two I'm like sitting here waking up in cold sweats. Like I really want to play a wizard, but the necromancer has ginger hair. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm having to go back and forth here. And so is it, do you think there's a world in which you could imagine that some of these classes are easier to play with bad ping? Because I know I'm from Alaska, so I know there's other people probably that are going to listen to this in the future in the VOD who are like, well, every game I've ever played, I play on 180 MS, and I wonder if I can even play these classes. That's a good, that's a good question. So I feel like Wizard is way more technical than the Necromancer. Um, in fact, on kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum, right? So Wizard, extraordinarily so, is a lot of, like, skill shots. So, like, you really got to get that black hole in the right place. You really, if you do disintegrate, you really got to aim it at the right pixel or else you're not 
optimally hitting all the enemies that are coming at you. Uh, when you teleport, if you teleport the wrong direction or you like bump into an object or something, like, well, okay, well, you just failed to initiate on your enemy in PvP and now your team's going to get wrecked or something, right? So it, it's, it's pretty technical. Uh, so I would say, to answer your question there, Wizard is probably more uh, susceptible to ping than Necromancer. Uh, Necromancer can kind of sit back, let pets tank and do things, and you can cast, you know, you can say, hey, attack that, hey, buff the pets, hey, let me drop a bone here, a bone tower here, let me do some bone spikes here, uh, that sort of thing. So you're doing a lot more support activities as a Necromancer. In fact, I, did, I should have mentioned this up front, Necromancer is one of the better support classes in the game. Um, it's, in, in fact, I think Crusader's the best support, but I think Necromancer takes a very close second, like very, very close second. Thank you. Thanks okay. for answering the question, man. I appreciate the, yeah. the long drawn out answer there. Yeah, would you say Necro is the best like beginner class if somebody's like never played a Diablo game and they're just kind of getting into it? N I can't. I can't really tell you if there's a best beginner class. Um, that's that's there. There's a, there's a lot kind of baked into that qualification. I think it's it's more about if you're going to have fun with it or not, right? So if you're like, hey, I don't really like the idea of summoning a bunch of skeletons and just like sitting back and being the support guy, I want to get in there and do damage, then you should go play a barbarian. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, but if, you, if, you're, if you're like, I want to play that Diablo 2 summon necromancer, uh, this is the other opinion I have. This is the best necromancer that we've seen in any ARPG. It's, it plays great. People love this, this class. That's good because Necro is always, I'd say like Necro and Barbarian are like the two that people tend to gravitate towards, I think. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it seems like. I, I've seen some numbers uh, of some like polls that have like thousands and thousands of responses. And you're actually 100% correct. Barbarian is number one and Necro is a, is a close second. Very nice. Very nice. Then uh, Colbert, did you want to get in there and ask anything? Um, I, I was just thinking about PvP. Is it just uh, server based, or oh, man. would you think that they would have any cross server uh -oh. PvP in the All future? Right. The real We're talking about like PvP. Here we go. So, <clears throat> Cold Root, the thing you need to know about this game is this game has more PvP than any ARPG ever made, uh, and in fact, it Got has right. more PvP than uh, a lot of games uh, that I've ever seen. The end game uh, for this is mostly pvp and when i say that it's not so let me clue you into some very contextual diablo community stuff way back in the day in diablo 3 one of the big topics right after diablo 3 launched that everybody really wanted was this idea of pvevp right where you're doing pvp but you're you know you're competing against someone else, but sort of indirectly, right? Like you're not fighting them directly, but you're like, they're doing an activity, you're doing an activity. You both get a certain Directives. amount of points for fighting yeah. monsters. Whoever gets more points wins kind of thing, right? Um, there is a ton of PvEVP in this game. And then there's also direct PvP, which has really high stakes. Um, like literally being like a, to give you another wow analogy, if you want to become high warlord, you have to beat everybody on the server kind of thing, right? And that's what, by the way, that's what the immortal is, is you're the, you're, you're the president of your server. So uh, to get into your specific question, is it server-based PvP? So almost all the PvP is server-based. Um, you're not going to, there's no like, uh, and for that record, like even PvE, you're not like doing Dungeon Finder or Raid Finder cross server. You're you're doing that all on the same server. Um, there's no like there's no like vendor you talk to that's like, hey, group me up with random people from anywhere in North America or anything like that. <laughs> it's all based on your server, right? So there's a there's there's a trade off there, right? Trade off is one. You kind of build this really strong community like you get to know everybody in the server you're going to see the same people in the dungeons um there's going to be these stories there's going to be drama there's going to be trolls there's going to be all these kinds of things that and that's really interesting right 
Uh, the trade-off there is that if you're on a low population server, your experience is not going to be the same experience as someone who's on a high population server. And you want to be on a high population server probably most of the time because there's there's more players, there's more groups, there's more there's just more going on, right? Uh, and this is every MMORPG. This isn't news to anybody. Uh, so the, the, there's one exception to this, and that's Battlegrounds. So Battlegrounds uh, are these 8v8 um, matches that occur, and those are, have region-wide uh, matchmaking. Uh, and so you'll, you'll get like similar ping times and that sort of thing. And I think they do region-wide matchmaking there just because they want uh, people to have very, very fast ping, uh, queue times. Okay, cool. So uh, it is going to be kind of like New World and Lost Ark where you've got like these are the servers on North America, these are the servers on Europe, and you kind of want to pick the same one as like your friends. Is, is that what we're kind of thinking it's going to be structured like? Abs that a th times a thousand. Um, because uh, this game has some social systems. And, and in fact, some of this news is like brand new news that a lot of people don't know. I haven't even done a video about this, so you're going to hear not... Maybe not first. If you're paying cl very close attention, you you would have seen some of this stuff. So there there's uh there's two main social systems in this game. There's there's clans, which I think a lot of people already know about clans, um, and there's war bands. So clans are kind of the big social system. It's like 100, 150 players. We don't know the exact number quite yet until launch. Um, and this is like the big faction versus faction PVEVP kind of a super end game stuff, right? And then there's war bands which more bands in beta and alpha did absolutely nothing. And we had no idea why they even exist in the game. In fact, our feedback to Blizzard was like, get rid of this. This is dumb. Like nobody's using this. So there are eight player groups, right? And eight is an interesting number because uh, the end game Heliquary bosses are eight player raids. And uh, when you party up in this game, it's four players, right? So you have two parties essentially and you merge them together, right? Uh, so what we figured out recently from a data dump is that, uh, the war bands are going to be fairly, uh, fairly valuable now, and you're going to really want to be in a war band. Um, so essentially what a war band does now is while you're in a group with a war band is you have a chance to drop like a chest that you pick up and the chest uh, when you open it goes to a special loot storage just for your warband. And then uh, you can go to that special loot storage and you can borrow an item, one item from that loot storage that you can use uh, amongst all of your warband members. Wait, so wait. it's like a clan within a clan. It's like a little mini clan. Yep. And can you, like swap people out or is this kind of like a, a, a group you create from scratch and we can swap people out. The caveat there is that if somebody leaves the group, any of the loot that they found that was contributed to the warband storage goes with them. So, you know, okay, you can't just, you can't like, in other words, you can't do like exploity things where you like, let's say you have like the biggest streamer in the world and they're like, Hey, I'm going to have everyone just like, feed me loot like you can't do that so it's not like a guild yep. bank where someone can like ninja the guild bank that's what i'm wondering or is it like the you 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 borrow it right so uh and again by the way this is all like very early stuff we haven't actually okay. seen this happen in the game so i'm speculating right okay uh but the text that we read in the data dump says you borrow the loot and that if somebody leaves the party they take all the loot that they contributed with them it's all it's all gone. So if you borrowed an item, it, you, you don't have that on your character anymore. They took it with them. Okay, okay. So that's that's where I was going to wonder because I was starting yep. to I was going to get concerned about. I mean, you know how it is with these type of games where it's it's basically black markets of people that go and they sell you know items etc. through other people. I know there's not really a market or any way to trade or anything like that. I was wondering, is, like, there's no way they're going to implement a way of being able to actually get the items from one person to another. I would assume. Yeah, they're 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 fairly smart. Um, and, and in fact, like they've done some other things um, to sort of like protect against, you know, for example, someone making a hundred accounts and then like you know botting them all up and then funneling resources to the market or something like that. They've done some yep. things to protect against that. Okay. 
so that they they're they're really smart in terms of like how the how the like trading and systems of this game work. Um, Can we talk but about because those? of that? The but because of that, the there's yeah yeah yeah. I, right. I I guess I'd say because of that, the trading and the marketplace in this game is pretty like narrow, right? So there's no you can't sell loot ever. You have to find all of your loot. You can never buy loot. You can't even with real money. You can you can can't you have to find it, right? Uh, and most of the stuff in the game you can't get at the marketplace. The only stuff you can get at the marketplace are legendary gems, skill stones, and normal gems. And I think I think that's everything. I don't don't quote me on that. That might not be exhaustive, but I think that's it. Um, okay. And even those, there's like a lot of rules about which one of those is tr is like sellable or not. Like a lot of them will just automatically bind to your account depending on how you acquired it, right? So uh, it's even like, well, I got this legendary gem, but I got it from the free legendary crest instead of like one of the ones that I paid for. And therefore, like, I can't transfer it to another character because then someone could make 100 bots and do that or, or something, right? Yeah, just like uh, we saw in Diablo 3 when they shut down the auction house, yep. Exactly, right. So they, they've been very careful to avoid a Diablo 3 auction house fiasco yeah. uh, kind of situation. Okay. Yep, I remember, I remember in the early days of Diablo 3, you were better off to spend $5 than to play for five days because the market got so flooded that you could get GG items for yeah. 74 cents. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember that mace that sold for like a hundred dollars the first day and then like six grand the next day or something well, like there that. Was, uh, there was an echoing fury that sold for like 8,500 euros. That, that might've actually been, I don't remember what that it was. That was insane. Um, and uh, David uh, asked in the chat how much inventory we can carry. I know in like Good Diablo course. 2, there was mechanics where you have charms and your inventory fills up super fast. Mm -hmm. And in Diablo 3, it was a lot bigger. You could carry like 48 things. This game is even more than that. And the philosophy here is very different, right? So just if do you know what a bag of holding is? A bag of holding? Yeah. Like yeah. You take so in, Dungeons, in, in Dungeons and Dragons, there's... There's this thing called a bag of holding, and it's a magical bag that when you put stuff in it, it uh, it weighs nothing. Like the bag itself will weigh a certain a set amount of weight, regardless of what it's what's in it. So let's say you have a 50 pound bag of holding, then you can just put a ton of stuff, and it's just a magical like warp hole that you can just dump like ha a house in, right? Like it's insane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on here in this game is you have a you have auto pickup so if you run over items and it's a mobile game right so this makes a lot of sense if you run over items you just you just pick them up automatically no That's matter what it is it just goes into your giant bag of holding inventory and you can carry a ton of stuff in there there is a limit but you can just pick up stuff for a very 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 long time and then when you're done with that you go back to town and you go to the blacksmith and you take your bag of holding and you dump it and there's there's an entire city block worth of inventory that comes out of your uh, out of your uh, bag of holding, <laughs> and then you salvage all of it with one button, and it just turns into materials that you can upgrade your stuff with. So you've played some D and D, I can tell over here. You're me. You're <laughs> laying some low, some low key jokes about some D and D. That we had a uh, we had another question come through in the chat uh, that says, "Will whales be able to have a clear advantage over free to play?" Uh, yeah, I I think so. Um, and I think it's good to characterize what that advantage means. So this game has absolutely no like time-based energy systems, stamina systems, any of that. There's none, there's zero of that, right? So like if you, if you're free to play, you play the game for 24 hours a day, um, and you're good to go. Uh, as we said before, there's no way to even buy loot in the game. So, uh, Whoever plays the most will have the like loot drop advantage there, right? So you can't you can't buy your way into loot and gear. Um, there are a couple of things that you could progress your character uh, further by purchasing. Um, so there's there's all these like little systems in the game. Uh, the uh, first one is normal gems. So you, again, this is something you could buy from the marketplace, right? So you could go to the marketplace, you could use platinum, 
which you could buy with real money. And then you could use normal gems and you could upgrade these normal gems to get just a little bit of stat bonus. It's, it's not a lot, but you can make your character more powerful with real money, right? It's not a ton, though. Um, and then uh, there is something called Legacy of the Haradrim, which you have these things, they're called vessels, and you can upgrade them with uh, barrel, sapphire, and uh, I forget the last one off the top of my head. But uh, you can progress that uh, using platinum every day. And again, that gives you a little bit of a bonus. Uh, then the, the, the final system that you can really kind of make your character more powerful with, and the one that I think a lot of people are concerned about, is uh, legendary gems. So legendary gems are extraordinarily powerful, and they give you a ton of power. And uh, they're essentially kind of like gotcha loot boxes, but you have to run a rift to uh, get the gems, right? So you buy what's called a legendary crest, you plug it into the rift, uh, and you can plug in up to 10 at a time. Uh, and then when you do that, you get a couple of resources. The first, you get something called Fading Ember. Fading Ember is something that you can use to uh, buy more legendary gems or runes, uh, like it's like a crafting kind of thing. And then you run the rift. It takes like, depending how how good you are at the game, like two to four minutes, something like that, to run the rift. And then when you kill the boss at the end of the rift, the uh, you have a chance to drop certain kinds of legendary gems. Which, uh, by the way, I have the the gem drop drop chances. If you're interested in that, we could talk about that. Always. <laughs> um, that that's sort of new information as well. Uh, and then uh, and then you have sort of like a loot box mechanic as soon as you kill that boss right so you get the uh legendary gems they drop on the ground and then legendary gems can be uh salvaged for gem power and then you can upgrade those legendary gems so i think of any of the systems that you should watch in terms of like i'm really concerned about pay to win in this game which i think that's kind of where the question is going right is i would watch legendary gems really closely and see what they do with it because i do know there's some more changes um, coming for launch. Okay, cool. And a, a question I get a lot is like, what's like, f like for the different tiers of spenders, wh what is people don't know if a whale in this game is going to be a hundred dollars a month or like the game we come from uh, rage to the legends, a whale can be $2,500 a month. Yeah, so yeah, like, win. like, like what is that spectrum? Like somebody that is ranked pretty high and pretty serious about the game. Is that someone who spends a hundred dollars a month on the game or like a thousand dollars a month on the game? So, yeah, this is, a, this is a, this is a, this is a, a di very difficult question because there's a lot of information we don't know yet in terms of how they've rebalanced legendary gems from the beta. Uh, in the beta, legendary gems were extremely powerful, but, but my guess, and I, this is highly speculative, uh, is that they've they've nerfed those gains um, a bit. Not not a ton. I, I want to say, I'm, I'm guessing like 20% here based on some like things I've seen. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's, I think that's going to be impactful. In terms of the amount of money, like that's really hard to call. Uh, but I will say this, right? Like, as you upgrade your legendary gems, um, there's sort of like a soft cap. Uh, I think, by the way, rank 10 is like the hard cap, so you can't rank them up past rank 10. Um, but as you rank them up, you get less and less, um, or, or I, I should say, it takes more and more resources to level them up, right? So the amount of money that it takes to like get a five out of five star legendary gem to rank 10, which would be like, I've beaten the game and now I'm going to quit the game because I'm bored and I, you know, can't get any more progress on that part of my character. Um, you know, that would be tremendously expensive, I think. Uh, but it would also be extremely difficult to get to. And I don't even want to hazard like how much money it would cost to get a five out of five rank 10 legendary gem. But we're, we're talking about like in terms of like orders of magnitude, we're talking like ten thousand dollars or more should i buy a uh, car or should i do that instead because my car just blew up on me 
Uh oh. <laughs> definitely, definitely focus on the carp. And wrong the answer, reason I say Echo. This, God damn it! It's it, Diablo <laughs> Immortal. I mean, it's all going here's, to Immortal. Here's the baby. reason I say this: because the people like me who know everything about this game and are going to blast the game at launch are going to be able to beat the whales by getting better loot and by uh, grinding the mechanics of the game. So the the flip side to this is that. You can actually, in, in some, in, to some ex- extent, let's say, because typically how this works, right, is a whale, they don't play the game as much. They're buying power because they're not playing the game as much, right? Obviously, all things equal, right? Like, someone who spends $100,000 of the game and plays, you know, 16 hours a day, and somebody who plays 16 hours a day, person playing $100,000 is going to have an advantage, right? Um, but let's, that that's not reality. Reality is like, this person plays 30 minutes in a day on average. And this person's playing 16 hours a day, right? So can the person playing 16 hours a day compete? And I think yes. Uh, I still don't think, ba- based on beta numbers alone, I still don't think it was quite fair. Uh, but free-to-play people can uh, get an advantage just by getting better loot because there's literally no way to get better, better loot except to play the game. Uh, and let me characterize this a little bit. Um, so folks coming from Diablo three will know about ancient and primal ancient loot. Yep. And essentially this is loot that has a, uh, ancient loot has a one in 10 chance of dropping. Uh, if, if a legendary drops, it's one in 10 chance of being ancient. And then primal ancient is like one in 400, right? And primal yep. ancient is like completely max stats, right? Uh, so this game has, I think. I don't actually know the actual drop rate, but I'm guessing it's 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 around one in twenty uh, chance to have uh, one in ten, one in twenty chance to uh, maybe it's one in fifteen. Yeah, let's say it's one in fifteen. One in fifteen chance to be exceptional, and what an exceptional item does is it can roll ad- additional attributes. So normally, when an, a legendary item drops, it rolls two primary attributes, which is uh, just sort of like the power mechanic, and then it rolls uh, one. Uh, a special attribute, which is like your like six percent extra damage to players, like like uh, you know like six percent cooldown reduction, like that sort of thing, right? Uh, the in, in Diablo two parlance, we'd call that like a magic affix, right? Uh, so if it's an exceptional item, the first thing that happens is like freaking awesome. You identify the item, and there's a there's a a, a toast. I don't know if you know what a toast is. This is like game design parlance at this point. Uh, there's a toast on the screen and it says exceptional item and it's yep, awesome yep. because you get excited. Yeah. You're like, oh, I found one finally, right? Like it's been, Dope I've been funny. grinding for an hour and a half. I got an exceptional item. Let's go. So an exceptional item has a chance to roll up to three primary attributes and three special attributes. Like it can roll less than that, right? So it could roll, it could roll uh, three primary and like, <laughs> two special or it could roll two primary and two special or it could roll two primary and three special right so what you want is you want an exceptional item to drop and then you want it to roll triple triple as we call it right so the chances of you getting exceptional like one in 15 the chances of you getting triple triple one in a thousand one in 500 like very 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 rare and what's really cool is you'll instantly know it's a triple triple because this game has a little up arrow system that will tell you if an item more or less is better for your character. Uh, is it accurate? So, Just real quick, because I know that's something that's... It's pretty accurate. Okay. Um, at the very top level of play, very, very top level, you'll still want to be like kind of looking at the details, right? right. Uh, you don't want to just like blindly trust about it. Specific but, builds at that point, right? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really like, okay, how do I do this? And you're like, you got your Excel spreadsheet up. You got maxroll.gg, and you got like our build tool and like all this kind of stuff going on, right? So at the very, very high levels of play, you're still doing that, right? But more or less, like, uh, you got this thing. So what's really cool about this is that most of the time, and when you first start out the game, you'll see one little green arrow. Right, and be like, oh, this is an upgrade for you, right? But when you got a really big upgrade, you'll get more than one green arrow. You'll get like two green arrows, and you'll be like, oh, I got two green arrows. When you get a triple triple, you can get up to four green arrows. Oh right? my god, the dopamine so, that they would unleash! Uh, <laughs> it's it's insane. Uh, so 
and it's so rare. Like I said, it's like one in a thousand, one in 500. And you probably won't even see these until you're max level, right? So we're talking like you just did a, you just did 30, 40, 50 hours of grinding, and you might see one of these. So when you see one of these, you see the four arrows, and you instantly know. You don't even have to look at the stats. You instantly know you got um, something amazing. I love that. Uh, Personally, I think so. it's a big deal. All of that said, someone who's grinding the game could outfit their character with all of these triple, triple stat exceptional items that take so long to grind up and get, and that gives you a tremendous advantage that might bring you up to the same point of someone who's like spending tens of thousands of dollars, but only playing the game a little bit. But, the, but yeah, right. okay. That makes sense. So it's from what I hear, can you correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the game is designed for people who are going to be playing like the average amount of hours, but the, you can play infinitely and it's slowly diminishing returns your experience to a point where there's like a oh. base floor. Exactly. Yes. Let's talk about um, okay. let's talk about that. So, didn't they remove that? No, like that, that part. That's still in the game, but they changed it. So, right. let's let's talk about this from like a game design perspective, right? So, uh, Max Roll, the the folks that the other content creators that that I work very closely with um, on on Diablo Immortal and other Diablo games, just completed an amazing achievement, and they got the world first. Uh, season one Diablo two resurrected uh, ladder uh, placement right and uh, yeah, I saw Teo, yep. Teo did this with the help of uh, our entire team and the community grinding out for like eight days seven eight days straight um, they I think some people slept over the course of seven days slept like maybe 20 hours right like absolutely insane levels of grinding Um completely like legitimate like no no like account sharing or botting or anything like this right um and they uh they uh and llama just got it yesterday as well right? yeah so that, that yep. that's awesome so i think i think he got second i'd, I'd have to double check on that i, I think you're right but yep. it, but the bad thing about that is that you play 150 hours in a week and then you have nothing else to do in the game and so a that's pretty unhealthy, right? Like you're you're going to damage yourself as a human being cuz human beings are only capable of you know, you have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to exercise. He's talking Darth's language. He's sitting it, up in his chair, he's ready to go. There's, I'm I don't know about that when info. there's sick things. When the you game know. launches, I don't know about sleep and stuff. <laughs> Bro, fuck yeah, yeah. the sleep coming straight from the underground. They got it but, for a ginger. But if if as a game designer, if you overemphasize gr- like overemphasize the grind and you don't have some sort of like content release schedule, then basically what's going to happen is you're going to grind out to 7 days and then that's the end of the game. You you're done. You have nothing less you, you have nothing else to do. You have no other goals. Um you're kind of bored at that point and then you quit, right? Uh and Perfect. There's, there's no reason for you to to keep playing. Uh, and so this is why Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 have seasons. And this is why every content creator in Diablo 3 sees uh, at the beginning of the season, they see like you yep. know, a, couple, a couple of thousand people on their stream like this. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, it, you're back to the hundreds or maybe even less. Right. So yep. this is a problem from like a game perspective because there's nothing to keep doing. There's no there's no treadmill. There's no grind that to that's interesting. Right. There's just this like go really hard and then. eh, Right. And I think what they wanted to do with Immortal was take that and kind of just like wear level it a little bit. Right. So like you're grinding still a good amount. You still have a lot of loot chase to go do, but you're not the the beginning spike is not quite as spiky. It's still spiky at the beginning, but it it's it doesn't drop off as, as you go on. Right. And. Immortal does that really, really well. And the way it does that is through a whole bunch of different systems. So the first system, probably the biggest one, is called World Paragon. And the way I view World Paragon is kind of, it's a content release schedule. And it's baked into a lot of things in the game. So essentially, the server that you're on has a Paragon level. Uh, Those of you who are familiar with Diablo 3 are familiar with Paragon levels, but those who aren't, let me explain that real quick. 
Once you hit the maximum character level, you can continue to earn additional levels uh, that give you like some minor benefit, right? So you're not going to get new skills for your character or anything like that. You're not going to do any new unlocks, but you'll get like a little point that you can put into like a little tree that you can invest somewhere and get a little minor benefit, right? So the server now has a Paragon level, and every day the server automatically levels up to Paragon levels. And based on your Paragon level relative to the server Paragon level, you will either get an XP uh, bonus or you'll get an XP penalty, right? Uh, and so let's say, let's say you're 100 levels behind the server Paragon. You just heard about Diablo Immortal, and it's September 2022. All your friends are way ahead of you, and you're like, crap, I got to catch up, right? You're going to get something like 800% XP bonus, and you're just going to blast through levels. You're going to just eight times faster than anybody else uh, until you reach the server Paragon level. So once you hit the server Paragon level, then you're at that 100% XP mark, right? And you stay, and then every level that you get after the server Paragon level the you get less and less and less and less and less till a certain point and we think the point is about 17.5 percent xp based on some math that we've done uh where it's theoretically impossible to actually level up further it would take you based on the, the highest xp we're aware, we were aware of in the game at the moment it would take you more than 24 hours to hit the next level and therefore by the time you hit the next level the server paragon would level up again and so you can't really progress past that wall Right. Quick question, uh, just for clarification yeah. here on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the server Paragon level get dictated by time, or is it the average Paragon level of all the people on the server? Because then it would be affected by pay the win overall. I think that's an important clarification. Time, time. So Bingo. on on day one of the game, I believe the the server Paragon level will either be Paragon zero or Paragon two, one of those two. Um, uh, and then every day. Every single day, so there's a server reset at 3 a.m. server time. So when that server reset happens, the Paragon, the server goes up to Paragon levels. The server, like, think cool. of the server like a character, right? Cool. So the server levels up to Paragon levels. Love that. And then now you now you have a little bit more runway for your character to go up. Now Can I this use a is really important. And tell me if this metaphor is correct, real quick. Is it yeah. sort of like, just to try to explain it for a way and make sure I understand for my monkey brain here, is it sort of like a Mario track where we're racing the ghost. There's, let's say they set a ghost on the track. If you're behind it, your engine goes faster, but once you get ahead of the ghost, you, it starts slowing you down. Is that roughly what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. It It's it's kind of like playing uh, Mario Kart in general. Yeah. So like, it, if you're in first place in Mario Kart, you have an advantage, right? You have a significant advantage. Um, and if you're really good at the game, you know how to outrun blue shells and you know how to, you know, throw bananas, uh, behind you advantageously to like avoid the red shells hitting you and all this kind of thing. Uh, but it's way harder to stay in first than it is to get in first again. Right. So if you get a star and bullet bill, like whatever, you might be able to just speed past and get back into first. Right. So it, it, it's, it's very much like that Thank kind you. of mechanic. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the server Paragon is also important for loot too. So every time you level up, like your, your Paragon level, the loot that drops in the world has higher stats as well. So the people who, um, e even you're, e even though it's really hard to stay in first, being in first comes with advantages of having the chance to have better loot than people who are just being lazy and not playing the game, right? So the way they've balanced this is to kind of say like, hey, we want, we, we want people who play the game a lot to be ahead, right? The blasters, we want them to be ahead. We want them to feel extra powerful, but we don't want them to have infinite power so that if somebody new comes to the game and wants to play with them, like a friend that just heard about it, that it's impossible for them to catch up and that they'll just never reach even close to their level of power. And, you know, they, they have to get power leveled, you know, for 200 hours straight in order to even like be even close to catch up. And even then they're only playing a support role and they're not having a lot of fun. Right. Okay. Yep. Do you You're explaining this well, by the way, sorry, Brad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate the insight. Do you, 
Do you think there is, because uh, the mo- obviously one of the most common questions you ever get is like, are they ever going to lean into like fresh reset seasons or is this going to be like five years from now, something they're still just kind of snowballing and progressing on? This is, this is a, this is a really good game design question. So every single MMO that's ever been made does one of two game progression systems. They either scale the numbers infinitely, so your Diablo 3s, your Lost Arcs, right? The numbers just get bigger and bigger and bigger until, like, they stop putting the number on the screen and they just say, like, 5M or, <laughs> you know, they, they, then, then it's 5B and then it's 5Q. <laughs> you know, like, it gets bigger yep. and bigger and bigger yep. forever. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's sort of that philosophy. And then there's the philosophy of... Uh, like World of Warcraft, where every two expansions you do a stat squish and you do a level squish. So, oh, you were level 120. Well, level 60 is now the the best level. You were doing a million damage. Now you're doing a thousand damage. Well, two expansions go by and you're doing a million damage again. And so we got to squish it back down. And 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 this sort of thing happens a lot. Um, and both of those systems have dramatic drawbacks. The first one is. Uh, it's impossible to know what anything does, right? You look at your gear and you're like, this gives me 200% bonus and this is multiplicative with the 30,000% bonus and this is additive with the 550% bonus. Yep. And and you just have no idea or any sense of scale of like what's going on. So you go to max roll, you look up the build, you put it on and you, you have fun, but you have no, you're like, control as a player is like robbed from you right so you're like oh i found a good item i think actually i don't know hold on let me google search it right and and in fact actually it's trash and and you're you got excited for the wrong reason um so that's that's a problem the other problem with uh with stat squishes is that you know every two expansions you go oh well now I just got nerfed or I don't feel as powerful anymore yeah. or like my character, you know, I, I was killing Ragnaros four expansions ago. Why are we killing Ragnaros again? Like, you know, like <laughs> you have these moments that you're just like, it, it, it sort of, it sort of removes the illusion of an, of an RPG, which is to grow powerful, more powerful, more powerful. So what Diablo Immortal does at its core is it has a mechanic which, by the way, the name of this mechanic is probably changed now. I, uh, it was called ORDR, Offensive Rating, Defensive Rating. Now it's called CR, which is, uh, I even forgot what it stands for. It's just stuck uh, on the fucking Ragnaros card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 just, it's basically a, a, like power, right? And so every primary attribute you have on your gear contributes to your power, right? So let's say you have a one strength on your gear. You get one CR on, on your stat sheet. So you have 10 strength and you have 10 fortitude. That's 20 CR on your stat sheet. Like character right? rating or something? Uh, combat rating. That's actually what it's oh, called. Okay. I remember yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. This is a new thing, right? This is this is something we found in the data mines. Um, so, uh, which is good because ORDR, I, I didn't like that terminology. So combat rating is way better. Uh, so what's really cool about this is combat rating is a percentage damage increase or damage reduction relative to the monsters or uh, other players that you're fighting, right? So what's cool about this is the damage numbers are always normalized. So if you are underpowered, then you're always going to be doing an underpowered number, right? And I can tell you like what the number is, like there's a hard fixed number, it's so cool, right? So I know if I walk into a challenge rift, and I'm doing 100 damage a shot, there's almost no chance I'm beating that challenge rift. It's just way, that's way too little damage, period. Because my my CR is like too low, um, no matter what. I just, it's, that's a hard wall. So you're not going to waste your time, and then you're at the end, you're going to be like, well, I'm an idiot, I guess this ain't happening. Yeah, I mean, and also it, it gives you those moments in combat where you say, I d- actually did a lot of damage, right? So like, let's say... You're you're doing an average. You walk into a challenge rift and you walk into a a pretty challenging challenge rift and you're doing like 900 damage a hit. Right, that's still a pretty hard challenge rift. You're gonna you're you're you might fail it a couple times. Uh, and if you're a really skilled player, you'll 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 demolish it if you really know what you're doing. Right, but um, 
uh, that's that's very hard. But then you you hit something for like five thousand damage, you know you like did an amazing crit, and you're like, whoa, okay, let's do more of that, right? And it gives you this feedback from the game that I haven't really seen uh, done too well, except you know in between expansions in like World of Warcraft, right? If you just played vanilla WoW, right, you know that you know, doing like an 8,000 damage crit is amazing. It's all, it's insanity, right? Uh, but then, you know, as soon as Bruno Crusade comes out, like now 8,000 damage is nothing, yeah, blah, 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 People are getting blah, one blah. shot by Palm Pyro, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and th those numbers don't, don't mean anything anymore, right? So because this is a sliding scale, the numbers always mean something, like always mean the same thing. Yeah, um, so the numbers are normalized. They're always normalized. I like it. And like th this, is kind of a, this is kind of a complex thing to explain, but like the whole game is really balanced around this thing. Like the whole game really functions around this thing. So ultimately what that means is that uh, you're probably never going to see a stat squish. You're probably never going to see them take stuff away from your character. Uh, they're going to be able to just like grow the systems. They're going to be at, able to add on new things to the game. They're going to be able to continue to get better and better and better loot. Um, but on the flip side of that, people who are new to the game, who are coming to the game a year late, are going to have some significant catch-up advantages, right? They're going to have 800% XP catch-up. They're going to be able to level up so much faster that that the that gear that you that you grinded really really hard for well now they're they they just like ballooned past that and they're able to catch up with with enough they still got to work for it right but um they're they're going to be able to to catch up to you in in some respects right okay cool i mean it makes sense yeah yeah that uh I, I, I want to transition uh, maybe to like, because, uh, well, and really quickly, Ford asked, do you think PC players will have an advantage over mobile only players? I guess we'll touch on that just real quick because I saw that in the chat. Ooh, maybe Quick. not. Maybe not. So th there's actually three kinds of players in this game. There's touch controls. Um, there's controller controls. And there's keyboard and mouse controls. So there's three different ways to approach controls. The touch controls, the severe disadvantage you're going to have is uh, playing for long periods of time, right? So if you want to play for a very long period of time, your thumb joints are not going to like you very much. Yeah. Um, you're, you're going to get hand cramps, um, all this kind of thing. And And maybe this is just because I'm old and... It's and not just you, bro. No, I can definitely game. relate to that. <laughs> um, so, but if you're going to grind 16 hours, it's like doing this is really tough. Now, the trade-off there is that a lot of the abilities in this game are really optimized for mobile. So there's a lot of abilities where you drop an ability on, you drop like an AOE on the screen. Like we were talking about Wizard earlier, right? Like you want to drop a meteor on the screen. In this, in, in like Diablo 3, you have to like, hit the hotkey, and then move your mouse, and then tap, and then click where it's going to go, right? In this game, you just tap, and it's there, and, it, and it'll go. And there's a lot of, like, mobile-sensitive things. Like, sometimes you have to hold it down. So you tap, and you hold it down, and it charges up, and then you let it go. Or you'll want to, like, you're in PvP, and you have a charge skill, and you want to prep it because you know your opponent is coming at you. So you hold it, and you charge it, and then as soon as you let it go, the action of letting it go... Uh, we'll we'll let it go. So in some cases there, mobile is actually an advantage. But I think overall, in my opinion, overall, mobile is probably the lowest tier of the three control uh, movements just because of like the hand cramps and that kind of thing. But it's also the most convenient. You can play it on the bus. You can play it on the couch. You can play it at your friend's house and have a little like mobile land party kind of thing. Like you can have that going on for you. Yeah, uh, controller has a significant advantage in terms of movement. So this game has 360 degree movement. So whenever you move the joystick on a controller, you can move in any direction. It's not just like eight directions, right? Um, and that gives you a lot of little subtle positioning things that you can do with your character uh, that uh, the controller is a lot better for, in my opinion, than um, 
uh, than keyboard and mouse will be or uh, touch will be, right? Uh, so the joystick there is a significant advantage. The trade-off is that a lot of these skills, these skill shots that you have to aim, you use the second joystick and sometimes rotating the joystick all the way around on a skill shot is like time expensive, right? Yeah. Because you don't have a mouse, sense. right? Yeah. So that's sort of the trade-off of controller. But controller is also the uh, the nicest of the three options on your hands, right? And you can play it. You can also, there's these mobile controllers like Razor Kishi, Backbone, one, all this kind of thing. You can also play that on the bus and on the couch and all that kind of thing. So I think uh, how people are actually going to play this game, the, the, the super hardcore players, right? They're going to go and they're going to go turn their, their PC on and they're going to play for like four hours, six hours, eight hours on PC. And then they're going to get their phone and they're going to go to the couch and they're going to play four more <laughs> hours, right? Uh, so I think the best way to approach this is to do both actually. Makes okay. sense. Yep. Yeah, that's, that, that's good. Cause that means it kind of appeals to multiple different ways. One of the things I did with future revolutions, like you can screen share your iPad or something and just play with a controller <laughs> from that, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Nice. Okay. Um, well, one thing I want to make sure that we touched on today, cause it's obviously the most important thing everybody always asks about is if we could go through the classes just real quick. Um, of course, yeah. Yep, this is yep. so popular. This is the, the topic. Yeah, because people are going to be, oh, especially because you said it's such an important choice. Um, people are going to be like uh, having questions like, what if I pick a character and a week later I'm not happy or three of my friends are playing the same character and we want some diversity. How rough is it to switch? And then uh, what's the optimal party? I think parties are four, war bands are eight, that type of stuff like that. So what are the optimal that we have to have a barbarian? We have to have, like just just you, I'll, I'll let you kind of take the floor. You obviously know way more than I do. Yeah, so I guess the first thing I'll say is I'll, I'll I'll do a shameless plug here is that I've been doing a series that goes in depth on every single character class over on my YouTube channel. They're good, uh, by the way. I'll plug it for you. Hack. They're good. Oh, man. thank you. Yeah, they're actually good. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'll make sure As to good. provide those links definitely. And if my explanation here doesn't convince you of one class or the other, like head on over there, and these are like 25, 30 minute videos that goes in depth to every single one. Um, so. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk, let's start out with Barbarian, right? So Barbarian is this high AOE damage melee play style that you have. It's a, uh, it, it's, it's a, it's sort of like a fast and blast is kind of how I describe it. <laughs> it's got a huge threat in PVP. Uh, we think it's the best PVP class in the game. Um, that has some, uh, some color to it, uh, that, we'll talk about uh, in the social systems and grouping because PVP in this game is group-based, right? Uh, so when you say best, that means uh, you need you still need a group to support you. So you can't just have like eight barbarians and hope to be successful, right? Um, so uh, they, have, they have a lot of crowd control options and they have some gr uh, great group buffs. Um, the trade-offs are you're in melee range, so you take a lot of damage. Um, you have low single target damage. A lot of your damage is very... AOE oriented, um, you're reliant on long cooldowns, and uh, when you're in very very difficult content, being in melee range is instant death. So in very very difficult content, you're going to fall off in terms of your ability to do stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's barbarian in a nutshell. We have uh, next up we have crusader. Crusader has the most AOE damage of any class in the game. They have a wide array of PvP skills. I'd say they're probably number two, like a close second to Barbarian. Uh, they have effective party-wide buffs, probably the best support class in the game. Uh, they have probably the best defensive skills in the game. And uh, they have really, really fast movement speed. They literally have a horse they ride that they ride around. It's their main thing. They just ride around on the horse and destroy everybody with it. Um, Wait, the really? caveat there... Yeah. That's amazing, it's, bro. It's the best thing about the Crusader at D3. Yeah, <laughs> just running like around. It's done like a quick dash thing, but do you get, a, do you get used to the horse like a decent amount? Yeah, it's even more than D3. In D3, in D3, the horse... Can I attack, horse, I think, also? Darts convinced. Yeah. In no, D3, hell no. the I'm horse doing is necro, like, probably, but... hey, I'm here, and I'm doing damage, and I want to go there. So let me get on my horse. I'm going to go there, right? Riding in this game, 
you get on the horse and you ru- you ride around and you do damage and then you keep moving and you keep yeah, doing damage it. and then you get on the horse again you keep riding around you keep doing damage and you're swinging your sword all the time like a crazy that wild badass. man badass uh so yeah, i love it <laughs> uh if if you can't tell i i'm a crusader player yeah you got uh, some passion the, in you there echo he's <laughs> a fire started out of nowhere the trade offs are uh you uh, have long school t- cooldowns Again, you're a melee class, just like Barbarian, so it's really hard to avoid damage. You fall off in high-end content. Um, your PvP is really just like one play style. You ride on your horse, that's it. And so everybody kind of knows what you're going to do. Um, <laughs> and real, this is really important. Your primary attacks, which is the main attack that every class has in the game, are the worst in the game. They're terrible. So in, you're going to be doing a lot more support activities as this class than necessarily being the front damage uh, person in all content, right? All right, so let's talk about Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter is kind of, I feel like, like the opposite of Crusader in a lot of ways. Um, they have, Cat. in my opinion, I've been told, I've been told I'm very wrong about this. In my opinion, they have the highest single target damage in the entire game. They can go up to a really? boss. They can, they can drop... Uh, bombs on the boss. They can drop like three multi shots. They can, uh, and then they can shoot them all at the same time. And they can just melt bosses. They're incredible. Really. Uh, in PvP, they're very tactical, right? So you have to kind of stand behind your other opponents, but they do a lot of damage. So you're like super, super squishy. Um, we think that they're maybe one of the worst classes in PvP. <laughs> It's, it's hard to say what that what that means for a game that isn't released yet, right? Um, they fight at range while moving, so this is very different than Diablo three. In Diablo three, you you like tumble forward and then you fire a whole bunch of multi shots and then you 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 like stutter step backwards, right? Like a marine in StarCraft or something. In this game, you move and shoot at the same time. So you're moving the joystick and you're holding the attack button and you're moving and you're shooting and you're like shooting strafe. and you're moving. Yeah. And but but not with like not with like a specific ability like strafe but with all of your abilities with yep. with all of them. So right? you can shoot so while moving, like it doesn't lock you to the ground, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's very very cool. Um, you have multi shot, which is probably the uh, fastest and best burst damage uh, ability in the entire game. You just you drop three multi shots and everything is evaporated. Uh, and then uh, its primary attack is probably the best primary attack in the game. It's called a crossbow shot, um, and it uh, it demolishes things. It's very, very good. Uh, the trade-offs for Demon Hunter is the build diversity is basically non-existent. You're going to be playing, like, more or less the same build for all the content. Uh, even though they try to have, like, different legendaries and stuff, there's very obvious uh, abilities that are very, very strong right now. Um they don't really give good group buffs, so they're not supporting at all. They're doing they're doing damage, right? They're not supporting the the party really. Uh, they're very squishy, so they take a lot of damage. Um, they don't have a lot of crowd control options, um, and their movement skills are probably some of the worst in the game. You know, they don't have a horse to ride around on. Uh, so yeah, they have you, to tumble, you, like tumbling around, like it was in D three. They. They have a uh, they they kind of have that they have something called daring swing, um, which you know you you become Spider Man for a second so you fire or Batman right you fire like a grappling hook and you go like this. Um, oh, all right. So that's different. It's not great. So a lot of people just don't use it, uh, and they just they just uh, put on their tennis shoes and kind of run around. But uh, but but yeah, they do the most damage I think in any PvP content. So that's yeah, that's fair. I mean. Yeah. If you're not mobile and you do the most damage, it's kind of a good trade-off. All right, so let's talk about Monk. So Monk has great mobility, and they, they're just teleporting all over the place all the time. If you're watching a Monk on your screen, you're like, where are they going to go next? I have no idea. Um, they have a pretty high AoE damage. Uh, they're very fast-paced, right? So they're going to teleport to a target. They're going to do some damage. They're going to teleport to another target. They're going to do some damage. Then they're going to do a big AOE that teleports to seven targets all at the same time. And then they're going to pull them all together, and then they're going to blow them up with Exploding Palm or something like that, right? Uh, they have uh, they, they have some really great shields for supporting your, uh, your party. So if you're doing, like, high-end Heliquary content and you are having trouble surviving, a monk is going to be able to help you out there. Trade-offs there 
are their melee range, so same problems as Crusader and Barbarian there. Um, they rely on a lot of these skill combos, so in kind of in that sense, they feel very similar to Wizard, right? You have to like do this thing, group them up, and then do this thing, and then boom, they all explode, right? Uh, you have to do a lot of inputs. So if you're playing Monk, I would really, really recommend you're playing with like a controller, your keyboard, or mouse um, instead or of not the touch have inputs for that. Yeah, and then uh, you uh, you you really are more kind of like Crusader. You're really more geared towards supporting other uh, classes. So if you're going to play like solo, like exclusively, and you don't really want to play with friends or whatever, Monk is probably not the class for you. Um, hmm. uh, so yeah, the That's trade-offs for Monk. Uh, Necro, let's talk about Necro. So uh, Necro, again, is right up there with Crusader. I, I would put it at second, but it's right up there with Crusader in terms of support. Uh, it has incredible support buffs, especially for raids. Um, it has a ton of minions that you're going to throw around the battlefield. It has the best ultimate in the game. Uh, this is something we actually haven't talked about. Every primary attack builds up a little meter, and once it's full, you can unleash an ultimate. Uh, their ultimate is by far the best ultimate in the game. They just uh, they just uh, auto target a whole bunch of like little. Uh, it's called a soul fire, and it just. Uh, it just hits everything on the field and kills everything. It's amazing. Um, it's a very tactically played uh, class in PvP, like we were talking about a little earlier. You throw these bone towers that's, that are stunning and kind of helping your teammates. Um, and they have a great mix of single target damage and AoE damage, right? So you can throw a fire golem on something and do a big uh, uh, patch of burning fire on the ground that does a bunch of AoE damage. Or you can tell your skeleton archers to target one particular target and they'll do he'll, they'll do that single target damage right so they have a good they have a good mix i i uh i made i made a graph about a month ago that kind of went uh, that that went to the top of the subreddit and i, put I saw that answer a little bit too far to the left i i've changed my opinion since then i would put them dead in the middle of that graph now you're talking um, about the spectrum of single target versus aoe right that's right. Yeah, yeah, I would say they're 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 straight in the middle of that. They do good AOE. They do good single target. And then um, wizard. trade offs there. Uh, oh yeah, we wait. Did we? Oh, wizard is next. We're almost there. So yep. trade offs. <laughs> trade offs uh, for necromancer. Uh, they they have a mobility skill, right? Um, but because of the way, because of the unique way their best builds work, you usually don't use it. Uh, so they end up lacking mobility. Um, they're reliant on corpses sometimes. Some of these builds are reliant on corpses. So if you don't have any corpses on the ground, you're not doing any DPS. Uh, they swap builds a lot, which uh, can be problematic uh, because you're going back to town to swap a build to do a particular thing. Um, many of their abilities, even though they're a range class, it, many of their abilities are sort of like in this mid-range, like short range, and that opens you up to significant risk because you're more squishy than the melee classes, um, and their class item, we we uh, their class consumable. We haven't talked about this at all, but their class consumable is by far the weak the weakest in the game. Oh, it really? It basically, it's worthless. I didn't even I haven't even heard of class consumable. Yeah, I I almost think they'll take them out for launch. I I don't know. I I, I don't even think they're worth talking about. So let's move on. They're right. they're, they're kind of like they're kind of a nothing burger. What I wanted to uh, ask you was, uh, yeah, yeah, as uh, you were talking about single target versus AOE, and I mentioned wizard because mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, where does the necro and again? I'm, I got to go necro v wizard because I feel like these are the these are the two compare like there's barbarian and crusader. I feel like people are going to pick between like there's a certain type of person that's going to pick between a barbarian and crusader. There's a type yep. of person that's going to pick between a necromancer and a wizard. You know what I mean? And so it's like the wizard I know falls on the probably way more on the AOE side. I would assume. But what I really am super curious about is where they fall on like the overall DPS chart. Like, are they actual DPS gods or what do they even bring to the table? Because if they're not DPS gods, what the fuck do they do? Wizards are DPS gods. Thank yeah. You. That's what I needed to hear. Uh, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's also a third person in that spectrum of people. So there's people who are Barbarian and Crusader, which that that's, by the way, that's my play style. In Tech Alpha, I played 250 hours of Barbarian. And then I picked Crusader once that came out, and I never looked back. And then um, there's a second kind of person who's going to pick Necromancer or Wizard, and they're going to have a tough choice. And then there's people who were destined. They were born 
to be demon be hunters or they're people that were destined or they were born to be monks. And you can never tell them that they're that they're, they're going to play any of these other classes. Like anytime I talk to a demon hunter player, they're like, I am playing demon hunter. I've played demon hunter in Diablo three for 10 years. And 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 in uh, in Diablo two, I played Amazon Boazon. That's all I play. I never play anything else. This is me, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you're talking to one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, wizard, they have tons of AOE and CC like black hole, for example. Um, they have these, uh, pretty satisfying skill synergies, like skill combos. Um, they have, uh, again, they, they play very tactically in PVP, but they're more about the DPS than they are, are about stuns like uh, necromancer is. Um, but also like that, that opens them up to more risk cause they're, they're sitting there d- dealing with the damage. Um, they fight at range or close up, right? So there are some battle mage builds that you can play where you're like in melee range and you have like these spinning orbs around you. And if they hit your enemies, they explode and just do tons of damage. Um, and then you have teleport, which uh, a lot of people won't feel that teleport is as fast as the Crusader's horse, but it's it's almost as fast. We've, by the way, we, we had uh, in beta, we had a race between all of the classes to see which one's or the fastest and all this kind of thing. So oh, teleport that's, that's is actually cool. almost as fast as the horse. Can you rank them real quick, one through six, and I'll write it down here? Uh, for fast? Off the top well, of your head? There's movement speed, and then there's tactical value, right? So teleport is more tactically valuable than uh, Crusader's horse because it's instantaneous, and you can't, you can't interrupt the duration of it. You just travel Panic there. Button. That's it. Right. So they're hard to rank. Uh, but if you're ranking just the amount of distance traveled in X amount of time, right? Fast if board. that's what we're talking about, um, then the number one would be Barbarian. Barbarian has uh, sprints and, and all this, all uh, charge, uh, all this stuff. It, it just, it goes so fast. Um, so if you're just trying to get to point A to point B, Barbarian's absolute fastest. Uh, Crusader is second. Um, but the trade-off there is Crusader can do da- the, do damage while it's doing that, right? So it's it's like swing and sword and all that kind of stuff on the way. Uh, third, uh, I put wizard, um, and then fourth uh, would be monk, and then fifth would be um, uh, necromancer. So when I said that necromancer has low mobility, that's kind of what I was talking about. It's like they don't have a lot of these dashes where they're running around the battlefield. You're really more reliant on sort of your minions to do things or like your poisons bone wall to like zone things off like things like that okay cool and here's um, that yeah, just a I, little I'd say, I'd say let me finish up wizard and then we'll, we'll go to the next thing last thing about wizard here is uh they they have this skill shot aim so much like monk um they're pretty like high high amount of input uh, you want to play a controller, you want to play keyboard mouse. I would say for Wizard, you definitely want to keep play keyboard mouse, I think. Okay. Um, they, uh, they're they pretty squishy, and they don't have any group buffs. They're, they're a DPS god, kind of like the Demon Hunter uh, kind of class. So you're not really buffing your teammates, you're, you're throwing down big spells. What's interesting to me is, because we're sitting here talking about classes, just a little bit of data, um, the most searched for class... Out of all of Diablo and more, though, is Necromancer. Of course it is, yeah. It's the, it's it's going to be... I think Necromancer is special in a lot of people's hearts. Uh, it's one of the most beloved classes from Diablo 2. Even in Diablo 3, for the last 20 seasons, it's been... Not twenty seasons, but you know, like fifteen seasons. It's been five thousand seasons. The yeah, most important classes to play if you're doing like group content in terms of like getting Paragon levels and that sort of thing. People love Necro, uh, and um, yeah, it's. I think I think one of the best decisions they made for this game was to launch with Necro as one of the classes. Do you think Necro? Because here's here's what's drawing me back necromancer was originally when i saw him i took a peek at this guy and i'm like oh great they just took my face and photoshopped it you know with my my hair on there (laughs) and they added it to the game so my question to you is this is necromancer going to be very boring to watch you think 
or is it actually got a lot going on? Because what I'm seeing with all these other things are real cool visuals, wizards shooting stuff. It's fun to play, it's interactive. You can see what I'm doing. Whereas what I'm hearing with Necromancer, it's like I'm seeing there on the gym row, like from, you know what it is? It's, have you seen Game of Thrones where you got the Ice King, you know, right back there with all the you know, Skeleton King, right? He's way in the back. He's just chilling with there, watching his White Walkers kill everyone. And then I walk forward while drinking a beer and collect my loot. Like, is that, you know what my I mean? kind of character? No. I don't think quite. I don't think it's that quite that uninteractive. Like I would not describe Necromancer as uninteractive. Okay. Uh, in terms of in terms of gameplay, I'll have a Necromancer video out here real soon. Oh baby. Okay. So you know, go to the pin. To, once again, the pin and comment down below in the description. Link for Echo Hex. Uh, so th the way I'd sort of describe this uh, to characterize it for you is, let's say you're in a challenge rift. Okay, you move forward, you start grouping up enemies, they're chasing you, you're like, all right, I'm grouping them up, I'm about to blast them down. And then you summon your fire golem and you drop it on them, right? The fire golem stuns them or and, and does like uh, fire everywhere or whatever. And then once you do that, you walk up to them and then you use Grim Scythe in sort of short range to, uh, or you use some sort of debuff in short range. Like you walk up to them yeah. and you like- That's kind of like cool though. And then, you, uh, you, you've now got a couple of corpses. Maybe you like blow the corpses up, or you make them release poison to start doing that continuous damage. Uh, and then at that point, maybe you buff your minions and then uh, drop another AOE to try to finish off that pack and then move on to the next pack. So it it's not one of the problems I'll say about Diablo Two Necromancer is that it's this chaos of like it's very un uninteractive, right? You you summon everything and then uh it just kind of wipes the field um or you know you like have enigma and you just teleport forward and then you you poison nova or whatever right um or you bone spirit right and you just you're just sitting at max range bone spiriting uh across the entire screen so this is this is not that this is like you got to balance a, a couple of things um so it's going to be pretty interesting to watch um it it, it it is to to give a caveat to that. It is more of a support class, kind of like Crusader okay. is, right? So you're not going to be the number one DPS in your group. You're going to be doing some very important things. You have like a, a bone shield uh, that in rate, like a, if you have the right legendary, it can actually make your entire party immune to five sources of damage, which is invaluable in wow. raid content, yeah, right? That's crazy. So if like if a uh, if right. a a boss is like, hey. I'm going to hit you with an instant kill attack. You're like, no, you're not. <laughs> Dude, so it's it's great. That's right? actually sick. You're selling it to me right here. And plus you're saying he sounds pretty good in PVP, right? Uh, yes, as a as a as a support. So right. you really want to group up with folks who are doing the damage again and uh someone else is going to initiate, right? The crusader is going to initiate, um a wizard's going to initiate. Uh, a monk is going to initiate. Maybe a barbarian is going to initiate. You're not initiating combat most of the time, right? Um, you might be able to initiate with like bone spikes, maybe. I don't, mm, that, that feels pretty weak to me. It's not like but, he's uh, a catcher. Like, oh, there's opportunity to jump in. You catch somebody. You yeah, know, stun three. And you're not going to catch somebody with a, with a with a with a bone tower. But what you are going to do is once that person is caught by that like initial knockback or mini stun, then you drop the bone tower. And, and then, once the bone tower is up, your entire team is going to just them dive up. that and person. Everyone's just yeah. taking them. All right. So you're going to be this, you're, you're, you're going to be the signal that the engagement's going to go well. Okay. I see. That's that you explain that like absolutely perfectly, by the way, like that's what I was exactly wondering. Um, one thing we, uh, we, we, had a question about her a little earlier that we we didn't really touch on too much was um, what's your composition, right? Because this is a social game. It's an MMO. You don't want to have eight barbarians in the party, right? Like uh, it, that can happen in Diablo 3, right? Where you're like, you have four necromancers in the party and that's the best party, right? So this game specifically has a lot of mechanics that rewards having unique classes in the party. One of those is warbands, right? So like, uh, Warbands is going to give you some sort of random loot. And if you have eight barbarians in the party, all eight barbarians are going to want to have the barbarian loot, right? <laughs> so having unique oh, classes yeah. in your warband is going to be valuable for that reason. But also the other reason is your uh, buffs don't stack. 
So if you have two two barbarians and they're both running, you're you're doing like a group optimized build, then your your barbarian buff that does allows everyone to do more damage doesn't stack with the other barbarian's barbarian buff. That right? makes sense. So if you have four classes that all have a unique buff, oh, the then now now you're really like you got some synergy going on and uh, and and that's uh, that's working out for you really really well. Um, okay. And then last part of that is that there's a paragon tree. Now this is like you're not going to even be able to hit this paragon tree until like two and a half months into the game. Uh, but there's a paragon tree where uh, if you have unique classes in your party, you get damage buffs and defensive buffs. So they're really kind of it's kind of subtle, right? It's uh, it's not they're not it's not like a you have to have unique classes in the party or else you can't play the game kind of thing. It's more just like we're gonna give you a little bit more damage here. A little they're more defense they're here. probably trying to avoid the Diablo three rat run one barb three necros yeah. and yeah, yeah. There's they're specifically avoiding rat run style metas. Cool. Um, I, I guess I've been sitting here kind of making notes on screen with everything you said. Um, is there like, uh, you know, obviously, you know, as you know, you're going to have groups of friends. OK, there's four of us. We're going to play. What's like the the meta composition? You know, if we're going to be, uh, you know, serious players and we want to do well, is there is there like an actual meta or is it simply just play what's fun? Is there a best meta? Uh, I think there's a best meta. Uh, but I will also say playing what's fun is, uh, probably what you should do, right? Uh, there's a certain kind of player though, who wants to play the best meta though, right? <laughs> yeah, they're so called Diablo players. If you're the kind of player who wants to play the absolute best meta, um, what I would say is a, this is maybe beta's best meta and B, uh, the metas for this game are pretty naive and pretty new, so things can change, right? But this is my current, currently held opinion, subject to rapid change, uh, getting closer to launch and post. Yep, give us all the qualifiers. You know, yep. Yeah, make, <laughs> co collect your own data. Like <laughs> yep, yep. This offer is not valid so, in Nebraska and Alaska. So you you want barbarian, you want uh, crusader or necromancer, uh, you want. Uh, two demon hunters. That's what I think the best comp is. So you're telling me wizard's garbage and is no one's going to play it, and I should definitely <laughs> not play my wizard class. That's what I'm hearing. No. Well, well, I think um, wizard is also the best challenge rift class. So like, uh, oh, there's a million something. different game modes, and there's a million different game modes in this game, and different classes at the very top, at the very top of the meta, different classes kind of hold the crown. To those different metas, I would say. And you're really selling Demon Hunter today, man. You're making Demon Hunter sound pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Because you said uh, you said it's I better think, to kind of diversify, but then you said uh, two Demon Hunters. Is there a reason you yeah. you swayed from that path? Just Kill, killing killing bosses. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Is it just the yeah? You were gonna say just the the bosses, the single target. Is that why why they're so good? Yeah, so killing bosses in this game is a big part of of uh, progression, right? So, like, the end game is going to be doing dungeon runs over and over and over again. After you do all your dailies and all your other content, you're going to be doing a dungeon over and over and over again. And you're going to be, like, blasting them as fast as possible, and you're going to be optimizing these runs, right? So you're going to want to... You know, take seconds. You're gonna be like speed running these dungeons if you're, you know, if you're at the high end of content, right? You're gonna be speed running dungeons, and you're gonna be like, oh, we did that one in one minute and fifty-seven seconds. It should have been one minute and fifty-two seconds. How dare we do it four seconds slower, <laughs> right? So when you have that, then uh, your bottleneck a lot of the time becomes killing the boss faster or killing bot like because sometimes there's many bosses that sort of thing, and uh, the demon hunter is perfect for killing bosses faster. Beautiful. Okay. Now, um, if someone said, well, we want to avoid having two of the same. Well, so you go with a Crusader, Do Barb, it. DH, and then what would be that flex spot as the fourth? Uh, Crusader, Barb, DH. Um, either, I mean, either one of the remaining three, Monk, Wizard, or Necro. If you... Um, 
It's not the answer I'm looking for here. Yeah. In that, I'm trying to put in that you into comp, a corner so that when it's not in that correct. Comp, I'm trying to be a journalist here and get it out of you. Here's, here's what I would pick. If you have a crusader in the party, I would not pick a necromancer in the same party. Um, I would pick monk or demon hunter. Or, or sorry, monk or wizard. And let me explain. So crusader uh, has a group build, uh, which is on immortal.maxroll.gg called Holy Fire. And, uh, oh, actually, it's not there anymore because I just updated the guide yesterday. Sorry, guys. It's on my YouTube video. It's on my YouTube video. Which, once again, can be found in the link uh, down below in the pinned comment description. Subscribe um, to Echo It's Hack. called Holy Fire. And specifically, it has an ability that you do a buff on all of your teammates. And then for six seconds, all of your teammates have this tiny little AoE uh, around them that does fire damage to anything that they're immediately next to. So that ability is tremendously powerful, and you do. And even though it, it's more of like a buff, it's actually your biggest DPS attack as the uh, Crusader in groups. Uh, and so much so that the whole build is named after it, right? Uh, so the monk, as a melee DPS class, is going to benefit more from that uh, that benefit as uh, more than anything else. And they also group things up. So you kind of double benefit from it. So the monk is going to do cyclone strike, group everything up, and then you're going to have three melee classes in the party, barb, crusader, monk. They're all going to get this big buff. buff. Like you're going to drop the buff, and the second you drop the buff, everything's going to die instantaneously. It's just – it's 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 it, bodies will fly across the screen. It's going to be insane. Um, so uh, you're, you're, you're going to have sort of that kind of composition. And the demon hunter will be just the boss killer in that group, right? Uh, if you have a wizard, then you're going to be doing more of these combos, right? Where you're going to set up, uh, you're going to set up sort of an, a big group of enemies. You're going to lay down the meteor, and then everyone's going to get 50% more uh, DPS when they combo uh, with that. And then on the boss, you have a little bit more, uh, you have a little bit more damage because the the wizard's a little bit better at single target than I would say the monk is uh, because they can stand at range and just fire magic missile constantly. Uh, but but yeah, that's kind of your trade-offs there, right? Like, do you want to like just blow these groups up with with uh, with kind of these combos with between monk and crusader and barb functioning as like melee powerhouse? Or do you want to have a little bit more of like a melee ranged balance in your party? It's, it's, it's hard to say uh, which one is actually better um, in terms of like time. How, uh, how okay. big is the gap between the meta and let's say, let's say uh, you got a group of friends that are like, you know what? We don't care about having the meta. We're going to play a couple monks and a couple necros because that's what we want to do. How hmm. far, how far behind will they be? Like, let's say the meta group clears it in two minutes. Are we talking two minutes and 30 seconds or are we talking like six minutes? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, more like, what's like the two, difference? Like, what's the difference yeah, more, between? Yeah, more like two minutes thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Not okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, assuming players, you had the same players play different classes, you're gonna play it slower, obviously, um, but not like six minutes slower. No way. Okay, so so there is a there is an optimal uh, setup, but it's not like it's twice as good. Yeah, and I'll characterize this with maybe the most broken thing you can do with the optimal uh, the optimal meta setup in the game, which is run do countess runs or uh, forgotten tower. So the countess uh, has this really cool dungeon where you have to kill a certain amount of of her minions in a certain amount of time, and then once you do, it unlocks the boss room. You go in the boss room, you kill the countess, and you do this over and over and over again. I've probably done thousands and thousands and thousands. And that's to get the rune runs. drops uh, to uh, farm your uh, your runes. No, this is your dungeon. No, I'm kidding, because that's what we do with Diablo 2. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, so you, uh, you kill her over and over and over again. But she has two phases, right? So if she, uh, if, once you do enough damage to her, she can trigger her second phase, and she'll like go up into the air, and then you can't damage her for a while until you kill these minions, and it's a big time loss. But if you have two demon hunters, and you have all the right buffs, like, Crusader, uh, Barbarian, and everyone's doing just insane damage. Can actually kill. You can actually one phaser, but you have to, you have to do crazy amounts of damage, and it's re, it's very difficult to pull off. 
Uh, but you can one phaser and you can save like 30 seconds of time. And then you pick up all the loot and you do the dungeon again. It saves a ton of time. Yep. Okay. So um, another question I, I know I have, you're talking about running these dungeons over and over again. So you can spend money to like kind of empower these, right? To get like better loot or or something like that. Like, like you put like a legendary no. quest in or something or what? what's the effect of that? No. Uh, dungeons, you just... There, there, there's no, there, there's no oh, money okay. you spend on dungeons. I thought you could like supercharge them, like empower the dungeon by spending money. So no. there's these things, aren't these these things like these glyphs you put in, and then those drop the legendary gems when you're doing like yeah. rifts or something. So How is that? You're work? talking about an elder rift very specifically. That's a that's a it's a completely different thing. So oh, okay. an elder rift is is uh is like a random dungeon. It's not one of like the dungeons you play in the world. It's just like a randomly generated thing, kind of like a rift in Diablo three. Um, and the enemies in there, they're, they're a cakewalk, they're a raffle stomp. Um, there's more of them and you just go through and you just kind of raffle stomp everything. Um, there's, there's a lot of cool random affixes that happen in there. And some of them are very, very rare, like one, 2% rare, uh, of the time. So it's, it's more of like a chaos fast, dungeon. fun, blasty kind of thing. Right, you just go, yeah, chaos dungeon from Lost Ark. Exactly, that's what it sounded like. Yeah, you just run in. You just, it, it's, it's really fun. And then at the end, if you plugged in the crests, you can get legendary gems from that. That's what that is. Okay. Cool. I, I, I saw Alpha Bravo uh, asked in the chat, can you get a feel of a class at the very start and say you don't like it? Uh, then you want to restart. How, how, how bad is that? Does that set you behind, or how devastating is that? Etc. Yeah, we, we addressed this a little earlier, but you know, different different way to ask the same question. So this is the greatest weakness of Diablo Immortal is that it it real the game has this opinion that it wants to lock you into a class which the benefit of that is that you start thinking of yourself as, you know, I'm a necromancer player, right? I'm a wizard player, I'm a crusader player, whatever it is. The the drawback to that is that there's no way for you to really figure out what what your class is exactly going to play like until you just play it for many, many hours or go watch uh, guide at youtube.com slash echo hack. <laughs> yeah. So, so the drawback is that's kind of a big decision and you're not going to get a true answer until you've already invested a significant amount of time in. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the other caveat to that is that class change as a system is coming. Um, we don't know when it's coming, but we're expecting maybe the first, maybe the second patch after launch. So think, like a month, two months. Oh, where you could like maybe transfer your uh, your like XP gains and stuff. Yeah, you transfer everything basically. Um, well, not not quite everything. They kind of have some. Uh, they have a blog post about a couple of things that don't transfer, but most most of the all the important stuff that you've earned on your character, your character's like power, so to speak, that all will transfer to your your new class. So we've talked a lot about like the technical details and stuff of it and what's good in the game, et cetera. But I want to ask like a really basic question, like an average person who probably doesn't even like, let's say care about meta or anything, right? How is the boss fights? Like when you go to the boss fights, are, do they, are they fun and interactive and enjoyable? Are they difficult? Oh, yeah. Do you feel rewarded when you beat it? What, can you explain a little bit of that for us? Yeah, we didn't even talk about this. Uh, yeah. yeah, the bosses all have unique mechanics. You're looking at them now. Um, and... Uh, they all have these unique mechanics. They have uh, these big telegraphed stuns that you'll have to dodge. If you've ever played any MMO, you'll, you'll be familiar with these kinds of uh, mechanics. Don't stand they the have fire multiple phases. Stuff. So like you're looking at Skeleton King. He has two phases. So once you do enough damage to him, he'll actually get up on his horse uh, and like a, a spectral steed will come out of the ground. That's cool. And uh, then he'll start like charging across the battlefield and That's you have to cool. fight him a, kind of a whole different way, right? Um, and every boss feels fairly unique, uh, some more than others. Uh, but, but yeah, all the bosses are super, super awesome. Cool. Uh, how important is, uh, in, is PVP in Diablo Immortal? Like, can you skip it at the start, let's say for a couple of days, or, or is it like a requirement if you want to be progressing? Got it. So... The game uh, unlocks PvP around level 40 or so is when you start tapping into some of the end game systems. And they give you a little taste. They'll be like, 
uh, they'll be like, hey, here's a, here's, a, here's a little introduction to what Heliquary bosses are going to feel like. Now, you're not going to fight your real Heliquary boss until after you hit the maximum level and you have a killer group and blah, 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 blah. But here's, here's a taste, right? So they start giving you a taste of some of these endgame systems, including PvP uh, around level 40. Um, you don't have to participate in PvP to progress your character. You can just do PvE content and uh, you can be what's called an adventurer and you can just play casually, right? Like you can log into the game, you can do sort of like your daily bounties, you can do some of your requests, you can go and kill monsters in the world and you can just like make your character more powerful. Cool, I went and did some dungeons with friends, this sort of thing, right? And you don't have to participate in like the extreme end game cycle of strife, but certainly you're gonna get more rewarded for doing so. So I think most players who engage with this game will really want to do some of the PvP endgame content. And when I say PvP endgame content, there's two kinds of that. There's direct PvP, where you're fighting other players, right? Like Battlegrounds, the Rite of Exile, the Challenge of the Immortal. Um, and then there's PvEVP, where you're fighting monsters, but you're doing so in a competitive way against another faction. So like uh, you're doing... Um, the vault, right? So you go into the Immortals vault and you have to kill these these enemies and try to steal their their loot and get out. And if you alert the Immortals, then real players will come in and they'll 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 ro they'll raffle stomp on on you because they're probably more powerful than you, um, and uh, and this sort of thing, right? So like, there's more. It's it's kind of like your level of engagement with the game, right? If you're really casual, just do all the Pv PVE content, do the Heliquary raids, maybe. Um, if you're getting more hardcore, you're gonna do you're gonna start venturing into the PvP systems, do the PvEVP stuff. And then if you're the ultimate hardcore, you're gonna be participating in the Rite of Exile. You're going to be trying to become the immortal with um, the challenge of the immortal, which is like some of the top players on your server that you're you're fighting against, this sort of thing. Okay, cool. And uh thank you by the way, Capper, for the raid. Uh, appreciate that. Just uh, to all of you join in, uh, chilling with uh, one of the best Diablo Immortal players, Echo Hack, and just Cold Brew and, uh, well, and, and Darth. Wait, wait, pause. What do you mean one of the? Come oh, on, the Brad. Best. The, the best. best, Brad. Come on. The guy's going to give you two hours <laughs> info, and you're going to drop the one of on him? Hype it up. Well, you know, I don't I don't like to assume titles, but you can assume yeah, sure. Them. I'll get on board with that. There you go. Yeah, there's definitely people in the I community. So here's one thing I'll say about being the immortal longer than anybody else in the world is um, when you are the immortal, you have a target painted on your back. And there's a <laughs> lot of people who get jealous of that or who don't want you to be the immortal or they're going to make up stories or whatever, right? There's going to be there's going to be server I think drama. There's like a statue this of the immortal. There's going to so there's going to be people in your DMs sending you death threats. There's going to be all this dude, stuff, right? This that, is that, so that, true, dude. dude. Yeah. So if if you want to be ultra competitive in this game, you got to make sure that you have the you're ready for that level of attention. It's a lot of attention, right? Like it paparazzi don't like Britney Spears kind of thing, right? Like it, it's going to it's going to get it, it's going to get a little out of hand and you got to be prepared for it, right? You got to you got to use your block button a lot, right? So I'm even if you're the most caring wholesome person on the planet, there are people who are it's the internet, right? People are going to do what the internet They're gonna does. They're going to find a, a way to hate yeah, you. That's just, yeah, yep. that's just in general. Yep. Yep. And so uh, I, I've i interviewed the Australian. So there's a different server. So every server has their own immortal. Uh, I didn't really clarify that. So uh, during the betas, there is an Australian server as well. And so I've talked with all of the Australian immortals uh, since the just throughout all the tests. And they've experienced the same thing as well, right? Like yeah. uh, the first Australian like immortal... Hate. She she got so much hate, so so much hate. It was told she was Marvel. a terrible person. All this stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, so you gotta you gotta have you gotta gotta what's be. What's the for that. what's the crux of that hate? Is it like oh you spent a bunch of money like like or like no skill you just paid your way to the top? Like what what's I mean, the crux of it? Like what causes it. that? It's I think it's a it's a bit of a complicated equation. It it's one part. Well, that person doesn't deserve that. I should have got that, right? So it's that kind of like breed of jealousy. All right. It's 
Um, your tactics weren't uh, good enough. You used cheese tactics to get there. Oh, you only have it because you and your whole group of fucking friends all jerked around in a circle together, and that's the only reason you yeah. have it. Bro, it, what it is, it's, it's just delegitimizing any actual achievements you make in your life. It's like, right. let me go back to your high school GPA and be like, your mom did your homework for you, bro, so you everything in your life is fake, too. It's, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's the same garbage. You'll get it in every game. I mean, like we, our whole guild got it in Marvel because we literally rode the servers so hard people couldn't even get into the pvp zone they couldn't even get into it <laughs> we got hate that's in amazing yeah you'll, you'll definitely you'll definitely build up uh some haters uh by 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 winning right um but i also think that kind of feeds into this idea uh which we, we also haven't talked about there's so much to talk about in this game guys seems like it bro um, i mean we're two hours in here right? we're hitting two hours of like one minute which and we're i might still have going, to use the bathroom baby. here soon i know it's like well i didn't realize i was going to be needing you know a lunch break and an assistant in order to finish this uh, podcast today we can we uh, it was just a casual thing we can end it whenever no, whenever you want to go it, like yeah, we can do another one yeah i'm here for whatever uh, so to become the immortal, you have to overthrow the current immortals. And you have to do this whole PvEVP thing that we've been talking about. You have to go through a whole a whole bunch of, of stuff, which we can talk about the technical de details about that after I've used the bathroom. But <laughs> uh, uh, essentially, what's going to happen is, and it's inevitable, right? So there is, there's a, a stacking buff that the shadows get. And it becomes impossible to hold immortals after a certain point. Like, I think maybe on the most inactive server, the with the uh, strongest immortals ever, they might be able to hold it for like seven weeks at the max, right? It's that, mm. and that would be really extreme. Yeah, that's pretty long, um, to be honest. Yeah, that would be very, 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 very long. Um, during beta, we held it for four weeks, and that I felt like we. We almost won that fourth week one, and we 100% would have lost fifth week no matter what. They, okay. No chance. It, it just, I wouldn't have even fought. And I it's fair have to bothered. say you guys were like sweaty as can get during the beta, right? Super sweaty. Like Excel spreadsheets, like like it, spreadsheets in space, Eve online levels of play. Eric you know, Hartman like, playing World of Warcraft. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> got to let um, the cat out one moment. Yes, of course. So if you want to be the immortal, you can become the immortal. It's just a matter of time, uh, depending on you know if you have if you have the top dark house, uh, uh, sorry, dark clan, and uh, overthrowing the immortals. Right uh, now, where this gets really interesting is so there's ten top there's to ten top dark clans that are all trying to overthrow the immortals separately. So after you overthrow the immortals, you win the right of exile. You kill the immortal in the challenge of the immortal. Immediately after the challenge of the immortal, literally seconds later, everyone who was in the challenge of the immortal fight, which is uh, 30 people, the top three people from the top 10 dark houses, all get revived. And then there's 10, t there's a 10 team, 3v3v3v3v3v3 uh, battle royale that happens. And the last team standing becomes the new immortal clan. That's called the challenge of the immortal. Uh, and it's this uh -huh. epic, this, this whole affair, right? So you all on the same night, you're going to like overthrow the immortals and then you're going to have to vie for your position to become the new immortals. And then if you get become the new immortals, then all, all these crazy things happen. Like West March totally changes and like there's, there's, there's fireworks and, and banners like everywhere whole, and all sorts of things. It's a whole thing when, when the immortals change. Yes, right? it's it's uh it's called it's called the cycle turns. So th this whole right. this whole thing is called the cycle right. of strife. Um, and then uh, you become the new immortals, and then now you have to uh you you have to rule the server. So because uh there's this switching of the immortals, this changing of the guard every four to six weeks, you know, uh, two to two to six weeks, something like that. Um, there's a wall in West March, which is the the main hub for the game. And you can go to the wall and you can, it's called the, the wall of honor. And you can look at the entire history of who was the immortals for the entire history of the server, dating all the way back to the very beginning of the server. So when you become the immortals, 
you're immortal forever in a way because you're going to be on this wall. And it and at the end of your reign, it's going to say all of the stats of your reign. Like how much dominance were you able to earn? How long were you able to hold the reign? And all this sort of thing. Uh, and so you'll you'll be able to like compare and be like, oh, well, this reign was more successful than that reign and, and so on and so forth. Okay. That, that, well, that's cool because at least it's, uh, you know, it's it's etched. Absolutely. Because let like me, you said, you're going to lose it. You can't hold it forever. You're absolutely going to lose it. Let me uh, let me run to the bathroom. We'll be right back. Yeah, for yep. sure. Sure, man. Cold Brew's already eating dinner over there. Yeah, Cold Brew's way oh, yeah. man. I mean, he's he's got about 10 words oh, in this three-hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's to say? I mean, I just know the game from watching videos, so... It's it's like I want to hear all about it. That's that's pretty much it. It's, it's called a a podcast, not an interview. What up, Cobra? How oh. are you? How was your day, Cobra? Tell me about your day. It's all right. Just been home today. I was out last night. Lots of food, lots of drinks. Oh yeah. Having sushi. Is your nose recovering? Ah, yeah, a little better. A little worse sometimes. Still congested. What about you? Uh, my left nose, it feels like it, it gets like boogers in it way easier than it used to. You feel that way? Huh. Well, the one that had the, the problem is still pretty, pretty congested all the time. I just can't really breathe from it. So yeah, I don't know if I should go to the doctor about, again. To be honest. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I can't. Is it? I feel like my. Well, maybe it is better. Maybe I'm just tripping. I. I. My memory is so bad that even though I'm saying they're not being able to breathe for like ten years, the second I can actually breathe, I instantly forget what it was like to not be able to breathe. Yeah, it was never like this for me, for sure. Because it's like sometimes I, I can't even. Uh, I can't even talk like from. I have to breathe in and then continue talking. So it's it it's pretty pretty um different from what it was before, but I don't know what's the what's the timeline here? When is it gonna get better? My dude literally told me four months is like the end of it. But I think I'm like are four we months. almost there? Or is it has it been? How long has it been? Two months. Two months? So I got, what, two more months? And if my nose isn't, you know, factoring it fresh with the big bore kit I put in it, then it's time to go back to the dock and be like, yo, you drilled out the wrong nose or something, right? Yeah, something like well, that. Well, technically it was both of them, I guess. We're sitting here talking about our cocaine habits. Echo Hack, welcome back. Uh, uh, no, actually, coffee, you yeah, mean? No, actually, we, we mean Cobra just had the same surgery. We had our nose ruined. Like, mine was from fighting back in the day, and I got my nose broke. So oh, we yeah. got the tibia, whatever it is, where they like go in and drill your nose out and fix the serpentine breaks. And we're, he's recovering from that. And I, I had mine like two weeks before his or something like that. Whoa, crazy. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. I was in a fight as well with Darth. It's true. We broke each other. But I was with winning Darth. most of the time. <laughs> That's why he had to have the surgery before me. I tried mm. it a little later. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was... I like that one, Cobra. That's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right. All right. I'll give you that one. All right. <laughs> Trying to predetermine who's going to become the immortal. Exactly. It's me. It's, it's oh, me. I have an actual right fight. Now. So we're gonna put some. Are we gonna put a five dollar bet on it? I already lost heading to Heads Up Poker the Car yeah. Mobile last night. Uh, DoorDash order. I owe him Wendy's. So we got to put at least a, a Wendy's meal worth of fun on on if we're making it to the Immortal season one or not, boys. There's got to be some. Yeah, but talk we're not gonna be on the same server. Do you want to know how to become Immortal season one? Of uh, course. Who doesn't want to know how to become Immortal season one? Is that question? Yeah, uh, I'll server. be playing. Uh, I'll be playing on Europe. So. Yeah. Oh, that's true. So, so, three people in Europe. Cobra is going to be immortal by default. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The way this is going to work is, first of all, you don't want to play on my server because what's going to happen is I'm going to tell everybody wh where we're playing and, and and all the Maxwell content creators are going to go there and then every other content creator is going to go there because that's where the content's going to be. Right. And it's going to be the busiest server on the planet. And that server and, is? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, they well, don't know no, yet. 
There's no server names yet, but when we know, like the world will know and everybody will go there. Do we know if there's like uh, a million US West, US East, US whatever you, servers, or is there like a million? Supposedly, you know the yes. Yeah. Do you know the numbers of like the servers? Like, oh, it's going to be like 10,000 per uh, server. I, hundreds and hundreds. I don't, I don't know. It, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, so my guess is it's going to be like Lost Ark launch, right? Is they'll have a certain number of servers that they launch with. They're going to have, they're going to base it based on like pre registers and other intel and data that they have. And they'll spin them up. And then those servers are going to fill up instantly because this game is going to be the most popular RPG ever made. And then they're they're going to have to do things like, hey, we're, we're freezing character creation on all these servers. You have to go to these new servers, and we're spinning up more servers as fast as we can, guys. This is just, it's it's crazy. Like it's it's going to be like Lost Ark launch. I think it's going to be absolutely mad. It's a madhouse um, where they're just making new right. servers all the time. I I, I think it's going to be something like that. Wait, what day is June second? Is it weekend? No, Thursday. Thursday. Can we get so our- going into the weekend? So. By the yep. second day of, of of course they like, of course they're gonna do it on a Thursday. Yep, and go flying yeah, into the, the five day black weekend. Fourth. By the How third day, it's gonna be reserved. much. Is what I'm thinking. Like, there's gonna be a million fucking people, and a lot of people have asked that question. I have server. no idea. Like, is this battle tag based? Because I know it's battle net, so it's like, do I get to it, use it, my it, battle Blizzard tag? usually does it like that. I would like if I could use my battle tag, but uh, yeah. So it is battle net. Uh, but your character name is still a, a thing, right? Right. In game. Uh, so, like, if you put someone on your friends list, it's your Battle.net friends list. Okay. So your character name doesn't matter that much. So it's not like a separate account or anything like that. But what goes on to the Hall of Diablo more, though, when you actually, like, you get your reward and they write your name down, they're not going to write down your battle pass. So it's going to matter, right? Or your battle True, net. yeah. yeah. Uh, the Oh, the other thing I didn't mention about that is that when you become the immortal, the immortal can name the rain, right? So, like, you you can be, like, the, oh, no. the rain, the, the rain of, 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 uh, it's gonna be of, some of furry shit glory and hatred, minutes. or, like, you can name it whatever you want. So, of course, uh, we named ours the Rain of the pizza. Whales. <laughs> <laughs> Whale pod rain, rain of the pizza is what you named yours? No, we named it M mm, Pizza. Oh, M mm, mm, Pizza. pizza. Dude, so this is going to be some then when you go to, names really quickly. I mean, it's yeah. going to get oh, bad man. fast, dude. So when you when you go to People the are Wall get bad. of Honor, you you and you click back, it will tell you the name of the rain and big text above. Oh, you no. know, so it'll be like M mm, Pizza or or <laughs> Whales Die or you know like whatever it is. like I like butts or like whatever <laughs> it is. It's you know, be great. Uh, and it's good. It's gonna be. It's gonna be great. Yeah, man, dude. I'm actually kind of hyped because something that these games have to have. Like, I mean, I know it's an ARPG, so it literally has to have it. But like, having social dynamic is something that makes these type of games go from like, even if it's a good game. Let's say the game's 15 out of 10 gameplay, like everything. It doesn't fucking matter if it's single player. People like this type of stuff. People probably ain't gonna play it that long. But since there's other people being able to play with other people, like that's the part that's great. So is the chat system in the game good? Is where I'm going with this. Is the guild chat system, the messaging system, all that? How is that yes. in game? Okay, yeah. There's sort of two things here. Uh, one thing you didn't mention. So let's let's okay. address chat first. So there is uh, there is a million chat channels. There's a there's like a world chat. There's guild uh, clan chat. There's a chat for the shadows. Chat for the immortals. Chat for the zone that you're in. Uh, private chats, like DMs, like all this kind of thing. And uh, chat can work either with like uh, thumbs or a Bluetooth keyboard, um, or I imagine on PC with a regular keyboard, right? So yeah, you can chat in game. Um, there's even a voice to chat feature. Oh. Uh, so you like hit a hit a button and then you like uh, t- talk out loud and it will uh, record the uh, what you're what you're doing and send it. Um, Wait, the audio right. file send it, or it will it will translate it as text, voice to text. What's uh, both? Oh. Actually, it'll do one, it'll, it can do both. Oh, that's so cool! You actually get to hear the other people. That's so cool. You can actually hear the other person's voice, but it's uh, <laughs> they they do some filtering. So if you say naughty words, it it just won't post it, right? Okay. So they, they got that they, they got that TikTok censorship in there. Got it. They got the TikTok censorship on that. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay, that's, um, man, it's, it's, it's getting it's more pretty, and more hype. It's it's pretty interesting. 
Now, I, I would say if you're if you're going try hard spreadsheet in, spreadsheets in Diablo kind of level, uh, you want to have Discord like the the best clans are already setting up their Discord now or already have, and they're like going full blast. Uh, like we are in, in recruitment, like they're already there. The game's already started, guys. Like, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that's so, how it always works with any big game. <laughs> uh, so um, that's that's where you really want to organize because the just the chat features of Discord are. But what if you have a clan like, of like thirty people? Uh, you have to have like different war bands because it's only eight. Is this going to be? I'm old enough to remember the disaster of Facebook making you pick your top eight friends, or, or uh, MySpace making you pick your top eight friends. So people are going to have to. You yep. have to, let's say you, for example, you have a Discord server. Twenty four people want to play together, and you got to be like, uh, I want you seven with me, and sorry. Yep. Oh, uh, is that is, is that a way? This is the biggest piece of feedback that we've given about these war bands already, and I think a lot of people don't like the current idea of war bands because of what you just talked about there, Cho, um, is that in some extent, to some extent, war bands are either going to be really good and you have to do them and you're go and they're exclusionary, right? Like here's, here's my eight people that I play with. I'm probably not going to group too much with other people if those eight people are online, uh, or they, they're completely worthless. And then you just ignore them entirely. And nobody uses the feature. It's kind of, I would say that's the community's sentiment right now around like what we think warbands is going to be. Again, this is all highly speculative. We we haven't had any of these warband features in the beta, so we don't know how it's actually going to play out. Um, but it's starting to look that way, you know, where it some people are going to feel excluded, some people are going to be feeling left out. Yeah, I haven't seen it live in game, but it, it seems like a bad idea just on the surface. Now, I can tell you kind of how we're handling it. Uh, so how we're handling it is uh, we literally just ask people, like, do you want to make your own warbands? Do you want us to make warbands for you? Um, and the large majority of people seem to want us to just slot people into warbands uh, and to just set them up for them. Um, which is great because that's uh, that makes it easy, right? So what we're trying to do is set up a warband leader, which is just a made-up role. It's not in game or anything, but just a made-up role. Um, and then the warband leader uh, will either pick their own people or will assign people to them. We're trying to put friends together. We're trying to put like like-minded communities together. So like for example, we have a lot of French players from the beta. Um, from Canada that that played with us that are going to play again. So there's going to be a couple of French war bands, I think, um, and, and this sort of thing, right? Uh, so we're we're trying to do our best around by it, spending but. tier. You're going to spend fifty dollars a month or five hundred. That's how I divide <laughs> them up. Minnow dolphin it might become cracking like well. spending tier. Yeah, you you might you might have some spending tier war bands, or it's like you must spend this amount of money uh, to, to enter. Um, although I think that's a flawed approach because those people yeah, don't know about is. like uh, Paragon snapshotting and uh, you know world first techniques and other things that we haven't. Which talked you're going to tell all of us, and yeah, I am. so I, all I, of us are world book, first. I, I will tell you everything I know. I, I like. Um, oh, I know you. Will. I, I'm current. I am currently under no embargoes. I will tell you everything. There it is, baby. Well, they spill every bit of every beans. That you can ever have. Because even if we, even if we get told what to do, it, it's it's totally different than actually, you know, practicing and doing them. Yeah, which you did. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That there yeah. is an advantage to having <laughs> practiced it. Um, but also a lot of it is the research. Like I spent hundreds and right. hundreds and hundreds of hours researching where every single layer location is, and then I just made a map for you guys, and you can just go use the map. It's already made. It's on the internet, right? It's on the uh, website, All right? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, on Immortal of Axel GG, right? Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, like you're going to need to go to different dungeons to find different set items. And uh, in order to like fill out your set once you hit max level, um, you don't have to figure out where those are. We have a set item guide that will tell you every single one where all the, well, where every dungeon that they are, where you unlock them and how to get all of them, right? So you don't have to like go like discover any of that information. So at least that part of, of the uh, experience is already done for you. I'm um 
I'm also worried about like the because uh, like I ran the best hardcore clan in Diablo three and it wasn't bad because you have like 120 people and everybody can play with each other. Mm-hmm. So one person didn't stick out like a sore thumb. I'm worried if you'll get like six or seven people being like, hey, so and so needs to be kicked from our war band. They haven't logged in for a couple of days. They're not pulling their weight. Yeah, it's going to be I think it's going to be pretty vicious. <laughs> In the very sweaty clans, uh, I'll tell you how it actually works in practice, right? So you're a clan leader. You have 100 people in your clan. You're going to go and you're going to look at the activity and how many, you know, marks or how many uh, uh, activity points as an immortal that people have done in a particular day. And you're going to go down the list and you're going to look at the very bottom. And at the very bottom is going to be someone who hasn't logged in it in a day. And the question you're going to have to ask yourself is, is that person going to log in tomorrow? Or is there a player that I know and that I trust that can fill that slot? And if you have a player that can fill that slot, you're going to fill that slot. Uh, so I would say at first, the slot, the, 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 the very, very beginning game, first five, 10 days, um, those that there's going to be a lot of turnover. There's going to be a lot of players who, who are like, they say they're going to blast the game eight hours a day for 10 days straight. They play it for one day and then they uninstall it or, or that sort of, I mean, there's going to be a couple people who do that, right? There's oh yeah. Be, the, yeah. Be people sure. who, who, who drop off pretty, pretty rapidly and you're going to replace them very rapidly. But after the first couple of weeks, it's, it's going to be, okay, well, some, somebody didn't play today, but they played tomorrow and you don't want to get rid of that person, right? Because you need an, army you need an absolute army as the immortals you need 300 people right in your clan that's crazy Uh, so so immortals the way it works now again this did this isn't the way it worked during beta but the way it works now is immortals is the immortal clan the people who won the challenge of the immortal and then they invite two other clans to become immortals. So if the clan size is 100, then it'll be 300 people. If the clan size is 150, then it'll be 450 people. So question, can I, because there's a potential problem with this that that you might be acutely aware of, is if that's the situation where they get invited by other clans, what's the reality of the top clans farming it for black market cash off the side and then just selling the immortals to their friends or whoever pays the highest or whatever? Is that a realistic thing? selling the so like you know you how you can sell like models. mythic dungeon runs and wow like wow's pay the win now because people just go in and you just spend money and then people run you through everything is there a world in which you live in which now what's going to happen is there will be and i know you said there's counter mechanics for like seven weeks is you know the highest you can even possibly imagine so i know it's not something like that but is there a world in which it's like okay all the best players go into one thing they snowball it so hard and now what they're doing is selling in more of those spots for five thousand dollars each much like people would sell like challenger spots in challenger teams in league of legends back in the day that was a huge problem stuff like that gotcha uh so first of all you would have to be invited to their clan because everything is clan based. So okay. uh, there's only a limited number of clan spots. So you would have to be, first of all, the clan would have to be an immortal clan, and then you would have to be invited to their clan in order to get one of these spots, right? Okay. So let's, so let's, let's say you set up two dummy clans uh, and you sell spots. Now, I don't know why you would do that because the goal of being the immortal is to hold on to the reign as long as possible. So you want to have as many of the best players as possible. Are the um, other people who are invited, though? Sorry to cut you off, but I, I need to critical over them. My yeah, point yeah. here is: is are those people that get invited? Do they go into the Hall of Fame as well? Do they get, or do they only get the limited buff and stuff? I mean, how does that work? Mm, is n- no, not really. Okay, so. Um, when you become immortals, there's a little tiny button in the bottom right side of the screen called founding members. And if you were in the clan that won, it will list all the members of the clan that won. But if you get invited to the immortals, you're not on the wall at all. Um, there's Perfect. a caveat to that is in that the person who's that the immortal can change the top four lieutenants who are on the wall anytime they want. With anyone? 
with 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 anybody, right? Clan or so not? They can oh no no no! It, they have to be an immortal, right? Oh okay but, okay. Just yeah. just sorry, I just gotta clarify because I know there's gonna be other people yep. listening to this that don't know at all, and that's you know any any four immortals okay. that you can swap the lieutenants as you want. Uh, there are reasons not to do that. That there are game mechanics where you don't want to do that. You want to pick four lieutenants and stick with them um, for 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 a lot of good reasons. But um, you can swap them, right? Like let's say someone drops out of the game and you're like, I actually need this slot filled. You can refill the slot, basically. Um, and the other thing you can do is you can abdicate being the immortal. So if you are the immortal, <laughs> you can give up being the immortal and give it to somebody else. There's a lot of rules around this. There's uh, certain things you can and can't do when you to abdicate. Um, but you can make somebody else the immortal. But if you do that, then at the end of the reign, the person that's on the wall is not you. It's the person you abdicated to who ended the reign as the immortal. Okay. So you're giving you're giving up any sort of like future uh, top spot you that you worked so hard for, right? So I doubt anybody would ever abdicate, but the option is there. So okay. So so what? You know, here let me let me give a metaphor that you're probably going to understand fairly well. Then it it sounds to me like it's the Illidan uh, glaive problem, like blade glaive problem, right? Which is basically that it's either A, going to cause lots of drama in the guild because you got to assign it, like the lieutenant spots, right? Let's say there's the four lieutenant spots. Only four people are going to get it. Yeah, you can say it's merit-based. Other people in the guild might argue over who gets those lieutenant spots, et cetera. I'm speculating, of course. I'm just trying to think sure, ahead yeah. here, right? Whereas um, whereas the other option is if it's a 100% it's a hundred person in a clan, right? So then if it's a 100% person in a clan, you have 99 pro players one shit bag that just started the game. You guys hit Immortal literally every time because you can backpack one player. I'm assuming you can backpack one player in a clan. Then oh, all yeah. you have to do is abdicate that one player who literally just started the game and hit max level or whatever the guy in Mordo. Now you abdicate him to the top and with garbage gear and $5 spent, he's now on the wall as the Immortal because he spent $3,000 to get into the clan because they know they're going to Mordo because they do it all the time because they're pros and can do that. And then the, he gets abdicated to the top because he paypal them. Sure. Uh, I, you, you could do that. Yeah. That is something that you could do. Well, see, and we're coming from a perspective of like the boosting in mm -hmm. the top of the arena Bingo. in Rage of the Legends. Cause it's yep. a problem. It's, it's, it's a yeah. problem that yep. will ruin games, which is why I, people, I people will literally pay $5,000 just to be able to say they were rank one and, and they'll do yeah. whatever it takes if that mechanic exists. And this kind of goes to, yeah, this kind of goes to, I, I it's starting to remind me of Eve Online sometimes. Oh, dude, where, such, yes. Yeah, where like somebody is like, "Oh, so and so has had access to the ship hangar of this big corporation, <laughs> and somebody PayPal'd them five thousand dollars. They yeah. stole everything, and then they dissolved the the alliance. And these are very rare and big events that, yeah. like, uh, I remember. I think it was uh, was it. Was it Bob that got dissolved? I forget. That happened back in the day. But anyway, um, I think if that happened, the person that did that would never, ever be part of any group ever again. They, they, they have to quit the game, basically. Okay, it's a reputation um, thing. And uh, the only way you become the immortal is if you're head of a clan anyway, right? Um, so all of, the, all of the work that you've done, you built your clan, you built your discord, you've built your reputation, you built your character, you grinded hours and hours and hours, you probably spent real money on the game, you, all of that, and then you sell that to somebody else for a one-time buyout. It could happen, um, like just like it did in, do, does in like Eve and stuff like back in the day, but un, very unlikely, highly unlikely to happen. Okay. That's good info. Appreciate the breakdown that. Yeah, I don't Did we really see that happen in Raid? Like Cold Brew, the people that paid thousands of dollars right. to get boosted, did they get kind of like shunned and and lose everything? Well, the top players who are actively, you know, competing knew who bought their their way to the top. But um, you know, when when the company actually, you know, sorted out the problem, well, those people were gone and couldn't get the top position anymore. So they pretty much just there with the one trophy that they had. 
I think Blizzard will probably clean it up if that's the problem too. Like Blizzard does not like boosting and all this stuff, right? And it's a bannable if yeah, it's in other games. Yeah. So I would imagine Diablo more though, they're literally writing it in the game. Like they're putting it on the wall itself. I'm assuming there, there's going to be at a minimum a small level of knowledge. I mean, if the, if it's, if everyone, and plus there's a million servers. So I mean, if there's gonna be a million different servers, then I don't know how much people are going to want to pay to be on the wall if it's only on for your server anyway. I'm assuming the walls are for individual servers and, and it, it's not like the wall goes to every single server and you see every immortal who ever existed on all servers. I'm assuming that's not the way it works, which would devalue that even wall aspect anyway, and people probably wouldn't be willing to pay for it. So yes, I just wanted to see if it was technically possible. There's many immortals, there's many servers, there's many walls. Yeah. Do you think that there's going to be a point where where people say, "Oh, this server is just too much for me. I'm going to jump jump server to another one because I just cannot compete here and, and ever get immortal." Yeah, I mean, the players who want to be immortal, uh, if they're on a very very busy server and they just can't they just can't get it for whatever reason, they they might jump servers maybe. Um, but usually usually in MMOs. If if you jump servers, you're you're like leaving your guild behind. This this is like server jumping is it kills guilds. Yeah. Yeah, or or like whole whole guilds move servers, like a coordinated jump, and, yeah, and I, try to compete somewhere else. Usually that kills the guild, uh, like nine times uh, out again. of ten. Yeah, because everyone's got friends you, in that server, and you know it, half the people uh, aren't going to do it, and yeah. It's 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 a it's really a last like if you're in my opinion if you're losing like just get better and win like don't <laughs> don't switch servers <laughs> just get better get good just get better <laughs> get good <laughs> if if you can like uh, some if they're like too wailed out or whatever I mean yeah I don't know I mean, but like if we were, Maybe, if, or like but, he was explaining. But, I mean, the yeah. welding's only gonna but, get you but so I mean, far. Purchases don't transfer over, right? So it's like you buy the battle pass. Is it just for the one character you made on that server? Yeah, it, uh, so battle pass is that's a something we haven't talked about at all. Uh, so battle pass, uh, you buy that. It's uh, uh, at least in the beta, it was uh, about five dollars a month, and then there was like a skip tier that was like fifteen a month. Um, so I, uh, I don't, I, I'm still not sure certain which one I'm going to buy because I think the $15 one has the cosmetics attached to it. So I might be getting that one. Um, but the battle pass is the best value for the money in the game and it's actually really good. Um, yeah. and, uh, it, uh, it has a whole bunch of rewards on it that are only claimable by one character. So once you buy the battle pass and you kind of progress through the whole thing then only one character benefits from a lot of the rewards but your other characters can still like if you paid for it can still progress this the battle pass over again but they're not going to get a lot of the like really really good yeah stuff. so when when darth starts as a necro and then hates himself and switches over to a wizard <laughs> two weeks into the battle pass he's lost kind of that first half of the battle pass E yes, maybe. Uh, I would probably just stick with Necro and then wait for class change to come around and then... <laughs> just and suffer then through the next two yeah. months. <laughs> good, good to know. <laughs> I know, because now it's like, I do, I'm still struggling. Like <laughs> The problem is, like, Necro v. Wizard, I like, I all can't right. pick, bro. Like, he, look at him. Look just, at him. They put just me a, in the game. I can't. All right, do a coin toss. Just, just, pick. No, no, just do a coin toss right now. Fine. Just right now, and that's oh, it. No. Wait, 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 Just, wait, wait. DM, you, you gotta, you gotta wait a day or two for me to get my necro video out. Uh, Which is gonna be the pink comment down below in the description. <laughs> subscribe. Go ahead and love it. I have the bell on, so I'll be notified of that one. <laughs> the bell. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it'll help you decide. I, I'm getting the hint from you that you're gonna like the necro. That's, that's that's what uh, I'm thinking. Plus, like that's where I'd push you. I mean, I thought it, oh, this is something I've been meaning to ask for like the entire two and a half hours, but my my brain runs on a ten second loop and I keep forgetting things. Is that I thought someone told me, and I even said it in a video with confidence, like a fucking monkey, that the, the, it's gender bending. 
Like you can pick male or female, right? Uh, I, I would say I would characterize it as like customization, right? So when you when you make your character, basically you can customize your character at the, at the beginning, yeah, like, right? Let, let me put it three. another way: uh, you can have boobs or not have boobs. Correct. Yes. Uh, thank you. So uh, I can. Addition, additionally, why is that, that so important, though? Because I'm, I'm a to man. That, I want to play as a man. It's, it's that simple. I'm one of those weird those. Okay. There's there's many different like uh, face options and that sort of thing. So in other words, this isn't Diablo three where you pick the gender and then that's it. That's the only okay. option. Like you pick right. the gender and then you you like you have a whole. Oh, you got like different sliding faces. bars and stuff you can play with. Uh, it's not it's not like Skyrim level or like cyberpunk level that sort of thing. It's more just like pick these portrait things and then and then you're on your way. Like presets. Kind of yeah, they're it. just presets. Um, oh, okay, at least cool. that's what we we okay. saw. Now, where right. where you really will be able to customize your characters with the um, the cosmetics and what what we've seen so far is that it looks like there's three different cosmetic slots. Uh, so it looks like there's one for your weapon, one for your armor, and one for your portal. So you're por you're going to port all over uh, your town portal, just like in other, any other Diablo game. So they've put a lot of work into the animations for the town portal for this game. So it's not like Diablo 2 where a town portal is a town portal. In this game, the barbarian, he like grabs his axes and he like opens the town portal, like a rift in space, like with his axes and it like makes a tear in space time. They want to sell those packs for and sure. Then, oh, uh, cosmetics. Yeah, it's going to be cosmetics. They want to that shit. And, uh, you know, like uh, the crusader, uh, the crusader, she uh, she like throws her sword into the dirt, and like her her shield like comes up, and the 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 portal appears there, and then goes in. Yeah, like, there's cool. all these special animations, and then I think uh, from what we've seen, if I if I remember correctly, you can get custom ones too that you can buy uh, cosmetically. So all the custom portal animations. So what I'm hearing, okay, good. That because here I know I absolutely know there's a subsection of people out there. I, I know it's only like five percent of people that care, but that but like they will not. If they're a girl, they will not play it if it's a guy. If they're a guy, they will not play it if it's a girl. It's just that it's just that simple. They won't. I don't yeah. go that far. A wizard for me, I'd still play even if it's a girl. I just prefer to be able to make them look like me. Because when I'm in the when I'm playing the game, I'm one of the people who likes to pretend my hero's me and I'm in an MMO and I'm a fantasy guy running around. Mm -hmm. the, decapitating zombies you know and then if i look down and i got a big pair of knockers it looks like to me like that's probably not me so <laughs> it just throws me off so it's not only that but even like the legendary items and other things that you pick up are are gendered right so like if you get uh what am i trying to think of my brain is going blank let's you get a particular legendary item for necromancer Right, and it's a chest, right? So the art of the chest, if you're female, it'll it'll have like the boob armor, and it'll be like apportioned for like a more feminine body and that sort of thing. And then if it's male armor, it'll be more broad shouldered, and there's there's no boobs on it. And they do the World of Warcraft thing. Man. Yeah, yeah, but even like even like the icons and everything are are uh, gendered as well, and they're locked so. out from each other entirely, like. I mean, I guess that doesn't make sense because I was going to say in some of the other games. Like, like if you have a female character, the items will be female. If you have a male character, right. the items will. I was for some reason. These are the, these the important you things we needed item. to get ironed out. These are. <laughs> yeah, that's why we needed to get the, the top guy here. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Am I stuff. the only one who actually cares about what my character looks like? I feel like I, I feel like this is not he, that weird of a question. No, it, no it's like the no, character is going to have. Laughing. It's not a weird question. Know, equipment on like the first five minutes so you're not gonna even know no. okay. like know. what kind I of always, i always i went i i guess i i, I never tried to uh, relate it to me i just went by what was cooler uh like i like i preferred playing like the female demon hunter um uh, but i would do like the male barbarian it just kind of depends on the class mm -hmm. it didn't really matter to me I always i'm the same i'm the same way yeah yeah, yeah I, I like the female crusader Yep, I like But the male witch doctor, stuff like that. Yeah. I like, I see, look at it. I'm drawn to the necromancer only because he has red hair and I feel represented <laughs> and heard. For, 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 for the record, I think the male necromancer is the better of the two necromancers. Yeah. And and I think I play female crusader, so I like that model 
better than the male. Yeah, it just comes down to what model. It's not like the models the are bad. Mask. The models are good. Yeah, they they look great. I'm just glad that Can we you do transmogging of your gear like you could in Diablo three. Uh, no. So like in terms of like updating an item for different appearance for that particular item, no. Um, I think in, instead what you have is you have you have a little cosmetic tab on your character sheet, and then you have these three slots that you can fill in with different cosmetics. Uh, the other thing you have is you have items that gain um, resonance over time based on like a bunch of a bunch of stuff. Um, and your regular items, even without buying cosmetics, your regular items will progress their appearance as well. Okay, cool. Mm. And then, and then the the re rolling of stats from the mystic is that in there? Like, like you find a GG item. There's just that one stat. Sort that's of. yeah, sort of. Um, there is a system where okay, so when you upgrade your items, they at level at upgrade levels six, eleven, and sixteen, they get a what's called a bonus attribute, and that bonus attribute is. Uh, a, an attribute that each slot, all six primary slots you have on your character, get like an extra bonus on. And there's all these different bonus families uh, that uh, can roll different slots. So you can re-roll those. They, they, they have a, it's a Diablo game. Of course, they roll in a range, right? And you can re-roll those with a reforged stone. And uh, you can, you can either earn reforged stones from a bunch of different places in the game or you can buy like family specific reforged stones from the shop. Okay. So you can sort of you can't re-roll gear per se, but you can re-roll these bonus attributes. Yep, yep. You gotcha. Can, you can sort of well out for gear though, right? If you buy stuff, sell it to the market and then buy uh, from my understanding you can buy gear. I'm trying to figure out how exactly getting no. there's no way to buy gear at all. Zero. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if I don't know like, how familiar. It, and when I say zero, you. you I mean like you can't even do like crazy things like trade this for that and this, and then with the second character do this, and then with the third Good. character do this, and then change it, change it for this thing, and then uh, go go you on the You actually have to play the game, like, is what you're telling me? Absolutely zero, nothing, <laughs> uh, nothing. So yeah. I'll trade you for a world well game. Yeah, this is the way you actually have to play the game. game. He launches it on launch day. He drops like eight hundred dollars. Plays it for an hour and a half. Um, you say that trash. like we don't all spend ten thousand dollars on raid Shadow Legends. Jesus Christ! Brett. I'm talking about every what was time that with Magic Legends. That it's that you Darth spent, Micro. Like, I get it. It's the well pod. We years. like to spend money. It's called <laughs> mobile games. We well out. <laughs> so we've confirmed here, Brad, who uh, has already been shit talking, is going to be the number one player. <clears throat> Is not That's spending money in the game. He's not spending money in the he's, game. We are confirmed right now. He will have a free to play car. He's free to play and he's going to show us how the win is free to play. That's right. Wow. That's the challenge. Not even Battle Pass. That's nothing. That's, no. That's wow. too expensive. That's like five bucks a month. Yeah. That's too much. Dude, I spent, I spent like $11,000 on Raid. You guys act like I'm never spending here. Let's call it clock. I'm just back, saying, those five you bucks. me, you get bit back. <laughs> <laughs> I think. By the way, I think free to play is a totally valid way of playing. And, and, and in this game, like uh, doing free to play, like you can you can be one of the most valuable players in the server. I think eventually there's going to be a free to play immortal. Maybe not at launch, but um, I, I think you can you can do it, and you can be very very valuable. And I think, in fact, the game is designed such that those free to play blasters that are playing the game a lot that you're going to have to ally with them. And in fact, hmm. what might happen is that the person who becomes immortal might be a free-to-play blaster who's just really good at organizing people, and mm. they just have support from a certain number of whales. Because you right. can only be immortal, like you say, if you own the clan. So if you just own the clan and then get all the... Instead of... And you already said you can backpack one person, so instead of buying your way in, why not just be the person who makes the guild and... Get 99 good players, you know, take one down, pass them around and then have them 99 and more of those on the wall. Yeah, you could definitely do that. But uh, you, you have to blast, right? 
you have to have the stats on your character. You're going to get destroyed in the Challenge of the Immortal. Yeah, I mean, I used to play World of Warcraft where you had to pay that monthly fee. So paying something like five dollars a month to to you know get something more in a game, it doesn't seem too much for me. But you know, after that amount, it becomes it can it can be like snowball effect in terms of how much you spend. So, like, yeah, the uh, way I characterize this is that buying the battle pass takes your the floor of your character power. Like up to a, a, a whole bunch. It's a it's a it's a it's a pretty rapid jump. So it takes your character floor up a bunch. Like yeah, the there's there's a ton of power if you're willing to spend unlimited amounts of money. Uh, but the floor of where you are relative to, the, to those people, you're just always going to be catching up to those people because the way this game is engineered is that these systems are completely independent of each other. Right. So the gear system uh, is completely independent of legendary gems. Right. So as you get more and more resources to get more and more legendary gems and as you get more lucky and you get more runes and you get more fading ember and all this kind of stuff that lets you get more legendary gems, you're catching up to anybody who just spent, you know, launched the game and spent one hundred thousand dollars. You're catching up to them on that system. And then you're already ahead of them on gear because you're blasting the game, you know, eight, 16 hours a day. So now it's slowly becoming like this, and you're, you might actually be passing them in power depending on play time and some of the other things like that. Yeah. Hmm. So it's 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 pretty interesting how they've balanced the 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 like pay to win mechanics and the 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 money spending mechanics in this game. By the way, it's Mother's Day. Not to that's uh, right. Just heads up for anyone who right now is needing to call their mom. Do you, do you think that the game was at a good state when they announced it at BlizzCon and then when they had that bad reaction from the crowd, they yeah. went back to the drawing board and then said, oh, we have to make it 10 times better than what it is right now. So I was there uh, oh, okay. <laughs> at BlizzCon in the audience uh, and I was, I, I'm friends with the, the mods at uh, Reddit Diablo, the Diablo subreddit. So I was sitting next to the Diablo mods uh, during the announcement. And what's important to characterize about this, which I, I've explained this a million times, is everybody going to BlizzCon that year was expecting Diablo 4. That's what they had heard rumors of. There was a big hype train that Blizzard <laughs> played themselves. They played themselves into this, right? Like the Didn't they give oh, out yeah. gifts that said yeah. like four on it or something? Like four they they had, they, dice? They, 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 they had a gift bags with things like a four-sided dice, D4. Uh, like, I mean, they, they, were they, they were supposed to announce Diablo 4. Yeah. Something changed about two weeks before BlizzCon because Blizzard was on the main forums being like, it's going to be hype. And then like two weeks before BlizzCon, they went on the forums and they were like, hey, everybody, like, like, temper your expectations. Don't get too yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, "Uh oh, what happened?" Right. Yeah. They something happened. Uh, we we don't know. We don't know about that specifically. But what what we do know is that everybody was expecting Diablo Four. So at the end of the main ceremony, uh, they showed a mortal. Uh, everyone went, "Oh, I don't want this." Right. I'm a PC gamer. Right. I don't even want to give this a chance. So. What the situation, the physical situation at BlizzCon was, is they had sort of like a main stage area. And the main stage area also had the Diablo Immortal demo area inside of it. And what's really important to note is that if there's a, uh, if there was a talk going on in the main stage area, which there is for all of BlizzCon, then you're not allowed to enter the main stage area. So people weren't allowed to go and play the demo of Diablo Immortal for basically the entire convention. And so even if you wanted to go play oh, it man. and try it out, it was difficult to even get in there, right? So the and the sort of like uh the chat <laughs> of the chat of like what Immortal is happened immediately after the the uh the main announcement. And so zero people had played the game at that point. Nobody had played the game. And I, I'm sitting in the audience with the Reddit uh, Diablo moderators, and we're all like, hey, I want to play the game. I want to find out about this. I'm kind of excited. 
we haven't gotten a new Diablo game. Like we know that the second expansion for Diablo 3 was canceled, for example. We haven't gotten a new Diablo game in a long time. Even though this isn't Diablo 4, I'm still excited about this. I want to go play this. Um, and a, a lot of people had that sentiment. And the general sentiment of the audience was just mocking, like that that sort of thing, like very, very, very negative. And I, I, I did not like that, right? And so obviously it didn't go well, right? Uh, played the game. The demo is actually really good. Um, if they had shipped the game, I, I think back then, I think it would have been a very, very good, maybe, uh, you know, top of the app store, like sort of ARPG. A lot of people would have really liked it, but, um, I don't think it would be the best, biggest ARPG ever. I don't think it would have hit the heights that I'm now talking about, right. With controller support, PC support, with the right of exile, uh, shadows, immortals, uh, you know, challenge of the immortal, like all this other content, the heliquary raids, eight player heliquary raids, the, all the social systems that they've added to the game since, uh, since then. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would have been the best ARPG of all time. And now we're, we're looking at something that potentially is going to blow every other ARPG out of the water now. Yep. I, I, I wanted to get your take real quick. I mean, before we wrap up, I don't know how long you got, but I just, something I wanted to add. I think it's kind of weird to me, the timing of like, they've got Diablo four coming kind of right after Diablo mortal. Like they go like 14 years without a Diablo game. And then they kind of have like two Diablo games, like going to compete with each other. It's, mm. it's kind of weird to me that they would do two of them kind of like this right away. I mean, uh, I don't know where you're getting your info. I haven't heard any Diablo 4 news besides the quarterly announcements, right? I mean, though, so, like, like obviously we're getting a Diablo 4 game semi soon. I mean, it, it could be two years, but, you know, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it could be like later this year. It could be two years. It could be, I don't know, Blizzard's Blizzard. It could be five years. I remember when they announced Overwatch and they were like, we're going to do a beta in January. And then it was two and a half years until they did a beta, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, so like, I don't, I don't even know if these launches will even be close. Uh, it's too too early to call, I think, on D four. We probably got like what you think twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six for D four. No problem. Four more years for D four sounds about yeah. right. Maybe I mean, maybe I, I guess that 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 could be what they're gonna do. They're gonna ride Diablo Immortal for a few years, and then and then at that point, uh, relaunch the hype with Diablo Four. I I will say this though, I, and this is my just totally my opinion. Um, I do think that a lot of the systems that are in Diablo Immortal are a scientific testing ground for some of the systems in Diablo Four. So, for example, because they've talked about this in the the um, quarterly updates. So, for example, Essence Transfer in Diablo Immortal allows you to take a legendary power, extract it at the at the Essence tran- Transfer vendor, and then uh, overwrite a legendary power on another legendary that you pick up. So that way mm-hmm. you can, like, get a better statted item and then use the power that you actually want and, like, infuse it, right? Um, oh, so that's, it's, that's it, really, cool, it's a actually. really yeah. cool system. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, a few months later, there's a quarterly update for Diablo 4. And they're like, hey, by the way, you can infuse your legendary powers with this thing. This this, this was very popular <laughs> in the Diablo Immortal beta. And we're doing it in Diablo 4. You know, like, <laughs> uh, so I think... What we're gonna see that's is a maybe spot like spot on more... voice for the Diablo like announcing guy voice, you know? Like <laughs> that's pretty spot. Cool. We'll see. We'll see this like more in depth version of some of the things that we're getting in Immortal. That's my opinion. And so, if a certain when if when Immortal comes out, if a lot of players are like, "This is the best thing ever. We only play this game mode. We do this all day with with our clan, with our war band, whatever." Then I think there's a good chance that something very similar to that will make it into D4. Yeah. Uh, one positive thing about the war band they could be thinking from their side is it might, it might drive people to like stay a little bit more active to not let people down. Cause there's kind of a catch 22. Like, 
Like, yes, it's going to be a little bit more savage and you, you know, you don't want to, but at the same time, people will have more of an incentive of like, oh, I don't want to let the other seven people down. Like they're really counting on me. I got to log in and do my daily. So they might be trying to kind of incentivize that. Yeah. That's sort of, yeah, that's sort of getting into sort of like the, the, uh, the DAUs, the daily active users and like a yep. little bit of, little bit of like mobile style like uh, FOMO mechanics and things like yeah. that, that that some people like to rip on. Um, yeah, there is that in this game. I think I think if you if you didn't say that, that you would be disingenuous, right? So there is some of that stuff. Like, oh, my my friends in my warband, they're doing their Heliquary raid for the week, and I'm not there, and I'm not going to get the rewards, or like uh, I'm not helping them out, and they need me. And so like you call your buddy up on Discord and say like. Hey man, we need we really need the eighth. Like get in here, like that sort of thing. Yeah, I think I think there's some yep. of that going on. For better or worse, you know. Yeah, it, it'll be a mixed bag. You know, it'll be it'll be it'll be great for some and rough for some, but it's hard to make any perfect system. Um, I definitely think this game. I mean, to some extent, it's a Diablo game, right? It's going to compete with Diablo Four on some extent. But to another extent, like Diablo 4 won't ever be optimized for a phone, right? It'll be like a hundred gigabyte download that you have to install on your 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 PC with the TI, you know, 3090 or whatever. Like uh I d I don't think that will work on your phone. So like um there's there's a broad swath of people who will never play Diablo 4 and they will play Immortal. Um and they'll like the idea for, and they'll watch people on Twitch and YouTube play Diablo Four, but they'll they'll be playing Immortal. Um, they'll be play people that play both. I, I will probably pay, play both. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, any Diablo game that comes out, we're gonna try it, you know. And uh, there will be people that will never ever play Immortal. They they've like taken a blood oath to never play any games yeah. on their phone ever. Uh, or, and, 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 you know, they're averse to it even now that it's on PC because, you know, it was, it's, it's made, it's a designed for a mobile game. So that, that, there's those kinds of folks as well. Yeah. Mobile transactions. Yeah. It still, it still has a very bad stigma. Like, like, uh, like I play yeah. a lot of age of age of empires four and I see the content creators over there talking about things like Diablo Immortal and that new, uh, Warcraft mobile game. And these RTS players talk like, look at this mobile trash. Like, well, I'm like, so yeah, there is definitely still that stigma that like your FPS gamers and your RTS gamers kind of like look down their nose at like some of these mm -hmm. mobile games. Yep. Yeah, mean, meanwhile, they're playing a game that looks like uh, people that denigrate RTSs. I've heard, you know, call it micro machines. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I had you know, like micro play, machines when you were a kid. The little like you're playing with micro machines. You're playing with little little Hot Wheels. Dude, yeah. <laughs> oh, those were so good. I had so many of them. You get like the little tank, the little micro machine. They were like metal and everything. And you, when you were walking around as a little toddler, you'd try to swallow them, and then your parents have to take you to the ER. I think I think I might have just <laughs> revealed my age. So yeah, man, we're both we're both in our thirties, right? <laughs> we're all we're all we're all there. We're all there. I was playing Diablo one, so yeah, wow, yeah. The um, I think the gaming back then was a little bit different. Uh, when I played Diablo one, I wasn't allowed to play Diablo one, so I rode my bike to my friend's house who had Diablo one on his Windows. 98 PC there you go. at the time Your friend was uptown and uh, yeah and uh, we just sat in his computer room and watched him play because we couldn't play and and we turned all the lights off to make it like dark and spooky <laughs> and uh, I mean go, going back you're like this game is not that scary but uh, it was everything I, I don't know. back then it, it, it was scarier than than it is now it it was just it's scary in the 90s yeah i remember being like 11 and i i would sit next to my friend while he played and it was his job to play and i would just do the potions that was my job i'm like I, dude i got you when your health gets low when your mana gets low i'll hit it at the perfect time you just focus on playing perfect and that's how what me and my guy. friend played diablo one <laughs> what a guy the dude, uh, the game that made me cry when I was a kid, I thought was scary was Metroid. I watched my dad play Super Metroid like over his shoulder, Ooh. and he got to Mother Brain right. And I'm like, oh man, I must have been like what four or five or something. I'm trying to think how old I would have been at that point. 
and I'm watching them play Super Metroid, right? And then like the 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 head that lands on the ground like grows in the mother brain, and I just instantly I'm like, ah, it's terrifying! And I got like running into my that, room crying. My parents may find me for the rest of my life for that. That music is <laughs> actually pretty pretty terrifying. It's, the whole it's Super dun, Metroid dun, best dun, game dun, ever dun, made. Dun, 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 dun. It's yeah, so it's good. Dude. Spooky. It's so it's spooky, good. Legit. And it's like a dark themed game. It's one of those games that would just allow it to be like a huge dark theme. It didn't care if you didn't like that and it didn't hold your hand. It's just, you don't know what to do. You can't go in that door. Sucks to suck. Like go figure it out, <laughs> you know? It's called a game. Yeah, I loved that. Oh, that, that's what uh, I wanted to ask also. Like how much hand holding is there in Diablo Immortal? Like when you start Ooh, out the game? That's a great question. There's a lot. Um, and to someone who is like a veteran game player, you're not going to like a lot of the hand holding. You're going to be hitting the skip button a good amount. Gonna roll your eyes like, oh, come on. Yeah. There, there's going to be, there's going to be a thing where they're like, Hey, did you know that your skill, you got a new one. Did you know you could tap on that? And you're going to be like, yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> and, and then you tap on, and then they're going to make you tap on it for the notification to go away and you tap on it and they're like, great. Now tap on this other thing so you can do, yeah, there's, there's some of that. And the good news is, is that once you progress to max level, you get past all of it and then all that stuff kind of fades into the background. You don't have yeah. that anymore. As mo we're the mobile gamer experts and we'll tell you for a fact, all of these games have those garbage things and like here click here yeah, it's a big the yellow first, circle like, hey. like, click on this and now click on that now clip this piece of gear now wear this unicorn hat and then you're like 15 minutes later you're like okay great i gotta play the game and then i think a gone. lot of the gasha type games we play do it as a mechanic to fight like the botting and re-rolling of accounts so they have like a 30 minute tutorial to make it harder for yeah, like that's probably part so they don't re-roll together i think people quit phone games more than anything do the frustration because you just slide up you're like i'm just dumb oh, with this shit and you just slide up and close out of the, uh, the app and then you just delete it off your phone you never do it again like the second you're frustrated it's gone off your phone like that's what happens with these games so you have yeah. to make sure that you know what the fuck you're doing um mm. by the time you actually get to the real game or else as soon as someone's like i don't know what to do they just quit instead of looking at that they'll just quit yeah i've done that on random little like tower defense games i've tried to play it's like it, i run into the first stupid thing and i'm like yeah see ya yep yeah. <laughs> I do it too. Like, uh, like one more ad that that I can handle. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can watch maybe one ad, but two oh, ads in a row. There's, there's, no, like there's no ads. There's Is no there ads. Any, like, watch this Seriously. ad for double no. XP for thirty minutes. Nope, nope, no ads. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no, watch this fake game ad for an xp bonus N nothing 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 like that you tell yeah, me when that's like the new meta for these mobile games they they all advertise for each other and they give like boosts in their games while they cross advertise <laughs> you finish a and riff I'll I'll and a pop I, up I, I, go on i will tell you why why they will never do that because diablo immortal is going to be the number one thing on the app store for forever it's uh man you are really confident about this game bro i gotta tell you you are they, you are selling they this hype train yes you're, selling you're it. shoveling you the coal dude you're just like let's go Co all aboard Co Co hack. Uh, just they but they know they know that's why there's they don't need the ads someone like, clip it someone gonna be at the top for echo, for echo hack in a year i kind of believe it on this though because <laughs> i mean if you even look at it like the amount of quality systems they have in this stuff on launch dude is ridiculous and it's going to be in the battle net launch which game has come out with controller support and a pc client day one Genshin, with maybe okay genshin's oh, a good oh. genshin's a good comparison oh yeah because that was cross-platform also um oh, on genshin was also well. a massive success it was that's true genshin. this is going to be yeah. as big as genshin except it's it's not going to be like we, genshin, genshin is a thirst trap okay right yeah. like a lot of people play that game because a uh, booba right Bingo. and this game you play it because it's a good game that's why you play it so uh genshin might be one of the most popular um there's traps of all time, but uh, Immortal is going to be the most popular like mobile game. I feel very called out right now, by the way, because even though I'm the, here's the thing, even though I, I was uh, bitching earlier about like, oh, like I, I need to be able to play as a guy for some reason for me, like uh, you're 100 correct. Be like, I got the booba. I got booba girl. Like, you know what I mean? I want more booba girl. Give it to me. Let me play as this hero. Let me uh, jiggle physics. Unfortunately, you are correct about that. And here's here's a guess for you on one thing. 
the other thing about Genshin is it's a thirst trap for gambling addicts. So it's like people like me like to go in and just mm. dump the money in, right? Whereas Diablo, you're buying power. Genshin, you're buying dopamine. They're completely separate entirely. And mm. it could, for one hero, I wanted to max out one hero. So I said, I'm going to max out a uh, child because he was the well guy. It's literally a well icon and everything for him. So I'm like, I'm going to do the, the water well guy. That makes sense. It's the well pod, right? I got my well pod art all up here and stuff. So I'm like, we were like, let's do it, boys. I maxed him out and with his weapon, it cost me $3,350 for one goddamn hero in a game where you need to bring four with you in your party and swap between them all the time. Just to get him at the max level, just to buy it. Yeah, it's a whole new world in these <laughs> Gosha games. Have you ever even played them, Echo Egg? Oh, I, I have, yeah, I, I have a few on my phone. In fact, the past, year and a half has been a bit of a transformation for me where I uh, started playing mobile games and I'm like, do I like this now? What? What's it's like, I had like a, a moment where I'm like looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, do I, am I a mobile gamer now? Is this, <laughs> is this what I do? This we all have that weird. moment of self-reflection. This happens. feels weird. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I've been playing a few. Um, one that I really like that I play uh, moderately, casually, uh, is called Near Reincarnation. I keep hearing about it's that a, one. It's, oh, a, yeah. it's, it's an auto battler, right? So you don't actually play the game so much as you just like pull up an Excel spreadsheet and then you're like, this is how I'm going to get the most of the things, right? <laughs> and like I said, I played Eve back in the day, so this appeals to me. You and Brad and then are going to get put, along great. You just, put the, you just put the phone on your desk and you let it play. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's like watching... It's like watching someone else play Final Fantasy, except it's your characters and they're earning, they're earning stuff like that. And the other thing is, it has a, it has a really interesting story. Um, I mean, you play through the story once and that's it. But like the story is pretty cool. I, I really enjoy that part of it. And the music yeah, the is shift. music is top tier. Yeah, I had to I had to focus on Age of Empires four for a while to prove my uh, street cred again in the gaming sphere. Yeah, so <laughs> street cred. Can't be a mobile gamer only for five years. <laughs> yeah, man. We all did kind of become mobile gamers out of nowhere. Like, I mean, I, I'm not even, I'm not a mobile gamer. Like, that's never how I started either. I mean, I went Star Wars to Raid and into whatever other ones I dabbled in. And now it's Diablo and more, though. And what, it's three years, four years I've been playing phone games, I feel like. Four years? Is that how long we've been in this business, boys? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, about three and a half. But three. let's... Uh, I'm going to start wrapping up soon here. So before we go, yeah, if there's anybody yeah, in the chat definitely. that has a burning question we didn't get to that you would like us to ask uh, Echo Hack, I'd be more than happy to. Or if there's anything that either uh, any of you would like to just cover real quick here before before we wrap up, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. I think we, we got a plethora of uh, of info here, though, and I, I, I know I learned a lot, so I'm I mean, super I can thankful. ask questions literally all day, but we're just going to sit yeah, here no, for I could, eight hours. I could, sit here for, I could sit here for 12 hours. Yeah, and, and it's about time. Of, like, what, ask, like, ask stuff, yeah, all day. A plethora. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we'll have to maybe do this again because we didn't even talk. Like, everything we talked about was basically up till about level 40. Like, we, yeah. didn't, really, we didn't really get past that. Um, we didn't yeah, I'm down. We can we can all touch base again next about. weekend and okay. and think of more questions and and mm -hmm. talk again and yeah, I, I, like I'm always down to hang part out, two, and, baby. Yeah, we can we can do a part two next weekend and and mm -hmm. craft some more questions and topics to dive into and stuff. June second, boys, mark your calendar. Twenty four days. Curtain wait. You find a uh, yes. countdown on Max. Wait. What is it? Max Three. roll GG. Immortal.maxroll.gg. Is that Immortal your website? .gg. Is that your website? Because you mentioned it a, a good amount. Is it a, a, a friend of yours, or do, who who runs the Max Row thing? Uh, so I'm one of the content creators on the Immortal team. Okay. Uh, Max Roll is basically a a coalition of some of the best Diablo content creators, and now we also do uh, Lost Ark and uh, I think Path of Exile at some point. Yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. So. Uh, it's really ARPG focused. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Very nice. All right. Links cool. in the description. Uh, yep. Like, comment, subscribe. But uh, I'll for put it again. I'll, I'll put it again here. Uh, 
There's, uh, make sure and hit up the Twitter right there and the YouTube channel right there. And then uh, we'll, 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 we'll chop this up, throw it on YouTube as well on a few of our channels and and definitely try to promote you as well as we can because you have a lot Thank of knowledge really on, appreciate that. on this game. And well, I'll make one prediction. I can tell you right now because just looking at your data as compared to like the pop-off with Marvel, like you say, Diablo is going to be 55 billion times bigger than Marvel ever could have even imagined it, in my opinion. And look, I, I bet you go the two or three million views the first month, easy. Just like that. That'd be yeah. my guess, for real. I can yeah, 30 days. I think that's fair. Just, wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I, like, You're talking crazy. like 10 grand of ad revenue, probably month one, I would assume. Would be my. Because it's a mobile game, also. We so, don't know yeah. what the CPM is going to be. Sorry, it's now good. we're getting into the nerdy YouTuber stuff. The, the YouTuber yeah. nerdy stuff. We don't yeah. know what the CPM is going to be, Darth. But I, I, none of that's outlandish. Yeah, that's no, realistic. That's my. That's my. That's my yeah. casual guess. Yeah. And you deserve it. You deserve it. So um, the reason I, I say yeah. that is because the people who are watching this later in the VOD, because I've been recording this three hours, it's too good of information, is you legitimately, if you watch this on my channel or Brad's channel or wherever, whoever's version of edited, whatever, like you got to go subscribe to Echo Hack because literally he's backpacking us through three hours of content. We got Cobra eating fucking sushi sitting here while this guy's <laughs> answering questions just everything. So it, it, give the man who's helping us some do and go subscribe to the channel and support them. And with that being said, I'm going to hit stop recording and goodbye.